Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, and welcome back to Edge of Legend here on Nat20 Productions Official on Twitch. Oh, I also got mine. Yeah, buddy. Uh, I'm going to turn this down because I can do the playback and it sounds awesome. All right. So welcome back. Thank you so much. And let's get right into it before my ADHD completely derails me once more. Uh, let's start off with Kylie. Kylie, please tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. PJ. Yes. The fact that you pick me first gives me anxiety every time. <laughs> Let's get it over with. Get the anxiety <laughs> out and we can all move on. God. Hi, I'm Kylie, or I go by Kai. It really doesn't matter at this point. I play Shiona Bis, the Elven Ranger, and we both go by she, her. Nice. Next up, we have Randy. Randy, please tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Hey everybody, I'm Randy Alvarenga. I'm playing Lothier Van Linsen. Our pronouns are he, him, and I'm very excited. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. That's good. Yeah, good to excite. Yeah. <laughs> Much excited. Next up, we got Sydney. Sydney, please tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Oh, well, hello. It is me. Um, that is different. Um, <laughs> my name is Sydney, and I play alone of the half elf cloistered cleric. And my pronouns are she, her, and so are Alona's. Yay. Yeah. Well, next up, we got Wes. Wes, please tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what your pronouns are. Hi, guys. I'm Wes. I play Dragon Targir, the Duskwalker Magnus. Magus. Not Magnus. That's a different thing. Uh, and we are both he, him. Nice. Well, my name is PJ. I am the GM. Hold on, it's upside down. GM for Edge of Legend here on Nat 20 Productions Official on Twitch. My pronouns are he, him, and today I will be playing everyone and everything in between. A uh, quick recap. Uh, if you didn't see today's recap on uh, Nat 20 Prods on YouTube, Sam did an awesome job. Sam's a little under the weather, so uh, they're going to be uh, kind of sitting out for this one. Uh, but if you didn't see last week's episode, here's what you missed. Um, so there was a lot happening in Emmerich Industries late at night. And uh, there was a door vault that was sealed with a magic fire. And because of that, the Wrath of Isix went off. And they made a mimic door. And I am just now seeing Randy did amazing. Thank you so much, Randy, for the subs. That's so awesome. Thank you. Yep. I got paid from an acting job, and so I love my friends. So there oh. you go. <laughs> Thank you so much. It means the world to me. Well, I appreciate you doing that, and uh, you know, uh, thank you so much. I'm gonna I'll keep going, or else I'm gonna get all blubbery and forget what I was saying. Um, so the vault door was uh, actually turned into a mimic. Uh, after some deliberation, the party decided to name it. Uh, I think Z X X Jeremy X X Z uh, from the old Pro MySpace it's, days. It's pronounced right. Jeremy. <laughs> Let's pronounce Jeremy. The Zs and Xs are all silent. Yeah, I definitely did not put that in the recap. <laughs> That's all right. Well, also, um, the party individually found different secrets that a 1,000-year-old borderline science lich um, would be hoarding about things like Romalgus Day and a few other horrible secrets. And the party decides to take these secrets and pocket them because that's what good adventurers do. Um, after they uh, quit the place, they go back to their hotel room in the suite and proceed to relax where they find the entire place is an ambush waiting by four Reckoners who break out of uh, uh, closets, armoires, whatever. Uh, you can tell by their uniform that they're probably surface staff that have been activated, sleeper agents, and here they are to kill the team. Well, the violence is really, really good. And I think out of the four people, three of them get kicked out of a 60-story window and they all just spot a splatter right on the ground. Uh, we end we end the episode with Morel pinning one of the Reckoners as uh, Alona casts Zone of Truth. Mm -hmm. And both the Reckoner and Morel critically failed the save. So now we start off with the episode oh right God. in the middle of the action, or should we say right in the middle of this very potentially embarrassing truth serum 
session. So without further ado, I hand the ball back to you all. What do you do? You know what's really messed up? I had an entire week to think about these questions. And I sure <laughs> did not. Oh, I'll, for- I'll come up with some. Oh, no. <laughs> um, so I imagine Alona realizes that Morel's also caught in the zone of truth and gets flustered and then calls out to everyone else in the party and just like calls everybody into the room that she's in. So she has backup just in case this guy tries to get out from under Morel. Mm-hmm. Um, do you guys hear me? Yeah. I mean, I was right in the hallway right outside the door. Hi, Life from the Apocalypse. Hi, Life Hello. from the Apocalypse. Thank Hi. you for the raid. It's great to see you. Welcome. Oh, my goodness. I think my friend Brendan is on this channel. Hi, Brendan. Ooh. They're from the East Coast. Oh. They're from, yeah, when I lived in Alexandria. Um, anywho, um, come in and help me, please, <laughs> is the tone that she's saying. So, come here. All right. <laughs> I'll be right there. As I- as I walk in the room and then I see the guy on the ground, I like hold my stick like I'm ready to like beat him with it. You want me to get him? No, wait, we, we have, uh, I think Morel has him for now, but we need to ask him a lot of questions. Oh, uh, what kind of questions are, are we gonna ask? Uh. Oh, I've got one, I've got one. How are you guys communicating? with each other. I mean, no, 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 I take that back. Who is leading all of these assassins right now? Oh. Okay, that, I'd rather ask that one. <laughs> that's good, that's more direct, because otherwise it sounds like you're asking both of them and then that's just a weird conversation from both sides. Oh, oh, Morel's also in your, your zone of truth, I see. And you hear a what? <laughs> and Dragon <laughs> runs into the room. Oh. Um, what? What? Morel is also okay. This is fantastic news. Sorry, I was just making sure that none of the people we kicked out the windows landed on anyone down below. They didn't land on anybody, did they? No one. They landed on absolutely okay, no one. Good. But Dragon definitely, after he knocked the guy out with the bench, uh, watched him go down, yeah. and then is coming into the room after hearing that. Wait, well, hold up. So you, what you're saying is that Morel also has to tell the truth about everything, right? Yeah, but we have the assassin. That's the important one in this. Is it? I lean back against the wall. (laughs) Dragon is having an internal struggle. Like, physically and visually, you could tell he is having an internal struggle right now. All right, ask the questions to the assassin. All right. Um, yeah. Yes, let's ask the questions. Is Shionibus here? Great. Yep. Um, Alona looks to Shionibus for moral support. Um, and uh, I get a thumbs up. Okay, great. Okay, we got this. We got this. Okay, cool. Um... How about you ask the first one, Lothian? I'll take a seat back for for this one. Oh, uh, all right. Uh, where can we find the assassin leading your crew? Uh, <laughs> you gotta be truthful. <laughs> or I mean, with the you know, you can. Whatever. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's uh, it's, Zone of Truth is a very interesting spell in Pathfinder Second Edition. Not only does it say you're not allowed to lie or uh, even tell like an inconvenient truth or whatever um, or inconspicuous truth, but it, you get a negative four to all deception checks. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> it's yeah. I, so it goes further to like potentially like body language too. Um, so you see the body language. We all know it's. Uh, so he, he, uh, he gets very uncomfortable and he says, technically speaking, we don't have any like leaders on locale. We get a job, uh, like a, like a manager or a head that gives us the operation. 
and then we go and we operate within the locale ourselves. Uh, that that still leaves the manager leading it. I, I don't understand the distinction you're trying to make. Uh, the the if he continues, the manager of this operation is not here. They're at headquarters. They're at the okay. guild headquarters. Where's that? <laughs> the one that my manager and you can see the look of just I can't believe I'm saying this. He says, the one that my manager currently operates in is within the order of the Platinum Hammers Island. <gasps> oh my god! Oh. Is Tobias here? Yep. <gasps> he is in nothing but a towel and a sword and a shield, and he just stares at this man. Where exactly in the city is it located the checkpoint is within uh a sector of buildings of worship and guild halls that we keep for those who worship less than savory uh, elements of our pantheon uh, the den of shadows and the den of and the den of blades mm. This lasts for 10 minutes. <laughs> Good question. Um, <laughs> uh, he, you know, I don't, I, I, I don't really know. <laughs> yeah, he, he, you can see him thinking, he goes, it would be nice to, because I would like the money and I'd like to have personal safety, but I understand that the job I'm in, death is a constant, and if I die, it's just a part of the process. So what you're telling me is that you're a freelance assassin? No, we we adhere to a strict code of contact when it comes to selling revenge to the highest bidder slash uh, code of, you know, what vengeance needs to be met. Um, but again, when you deal in this business, you know you're going to die eventually. So it's like, eh, if it happens, it happens. Um, you know, I'm very flexible. Uh, if you want to give me some money to leave, I mean, I can, but I, you know, I need to make sure the job is done or else the punishments will be probably just as bad as y'all killing me right now. So how do you prove the job has been done? There is a check-in period and debriefing, and usually we have to give them a report and they have to corroborate the report. And then they have to check the report with the person that hired us. Uh, you know, because sometimes vengeance isn't murder. Sometimes it's just, I really want them to be embarrassed at a party. That seems lame. Wait, I want to pretend like we're dead. I wish there were Polaroids in this universe because I would 100% <laughs> be like, we just uh, get him to go and tell them that we're dead. And then like they, they are not looking for us actively. <laughs> the Green King, right? Uh, a wormkin, mm. uh, copper colored wormkin, but it's strange though. His, his, I've only met two wormkin my entire life, and usually they're all you know, they have the scale color, the scales are very consistent. But he was having weird green scales start to appear in his copper colored uh scale profile. Um, his name was. It's an old Acadian name. I want to say it's Arbord. Arbord? Yeah, it was Arbord. <gasps> Wait! 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 Isn't that the friend of old man Tanin? Yeah, oh, I... Hold on. Hold on. I met Tanin once on accident as I was leaving the Den of Daggers. I ran into a, a secret uh, portal and I entered into his his seclusion what? yeah he he i told him my name was was uh jordash he called me doordash for about 19 minutes and then i left yeah <laughs> okay so you were hired by arbad or arbad who is a friend of old mantonines um and that person 
had copper scales but had green popping through the copper um how old did this person appear do you know i guess sadly i don't know enough about wormkin anatomy i mean i was told old man tanin was like thirty thousand years old and you know all i could tell is he had some wispy beard and that's about it right 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 and how did this person how long ago did he get in contact with you Oh, I gotta tell you, uh, oof, this operation's been happening for about six months to a year. Uh, I think I think we got the the contract a couple of weeks after the Green War ended. Um... Oh, you were added later, but you're under the contingency of the contract. Uh, any persons or parties hereby associated with the main party shall be indicative of the main contract itself. Uh, it's a rider for add-ons or, you know, when the revenge gets a little more broad stroke. Does that make any sense? Well, you need to tell your manager that they are a part of the green, the, the main party now. So they need to just scrap the whole thing and start over. Right. Can we not have dinner with people because all of a sudden then they're part of our crew? No, no, that's that's in our operational code uh, necessary in the line of acquisition. If there is someone who appears to be close enough to you that if we apply pressure, we can get to you. We can apply them to our to our contract ad hoc. I, I, I go over to the dude and I go. So what if we said you're our new friend? What would you do to stop your friends from chasing us? Um, if you if you could prove that I was somehow benefiting you, then I would also be under that guideline, and then I would be apt <clears throat> for um, redundancy removal. I mean, what will it look like? when the rest of your friends are all dead and they don't find you. And oh. we're still walking around like we survived an attack. Maybe yeah. someone helped us. Hmm. Sounds a little uh, suspicious to me. Um, uh, well, they would, uh, I, I mean, maybe they would assume the contract was still being carried on in good faith. Oh, uh, oh it, no, but what about you? See, there's a, there, there's a loose end here. And, and I think either you try to help us figure out how we keep our necks so you can keep yours. But Oh. Yeah. I mean, realistically, we've already killed three of your friends. I'm not really looking to add anybody else to the pavement down below. Um, you know, I'd like to let you live, to be honest. But if we do, are you going to try to come back and kill us? Yeah. Well, you can't because Ooh. I'm going to start a rumor saying that you... You helped us. Yeah, but if he comes back to try and kill us, he's but it, I mean, that he didn't help us. Or it would mean they catch you on your way home. How much time is left on this spell? I don't know. <laughs> it's ten minutes. I haven't put a timer on. I I don't feel like that's okay. seven magical. Seven minutes left. I don't want to waste it. Uh, Dragon's yeah. gonna go up and whisper into Morel's ear. Hold on. I want to make sure because you sent me that is a private message. Okay. Um, little turd. You so little that's turd. so smart. That's so smart. I'm gonna I'm gonna write this, and when I write this private message, I want everyone who is talking to the reckoner to roll an intimidation check or diplomacy check. Oh. I feel like at this point it's kind of both because he's telling the truth and he's being interrogated. So, all right. Uh, point. That is a. <gasps> Yep. 22. Yeah. You got a net 20? Yeah, I did. Hey, oh, oh yeah, you wait, did. Damn. This I don't is even the know. second I time. Damn, this is scary. This is the, my scary first time druid. Tonight. My first time tonight. Oh, well, you mean intimidating and Yeah. Terrible? That's two net 20s intimidating people. Scary druid. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Uh, 
I have an uh, intimidation. I bet you my intimidate's not me. <laughs> it's 29. 29. Okay, 26. so you. Shit. Can I take my hero Can point back? Because you don't need me. <laughs> I got a 22. I thought I was doing good as Dragon, and then, damn. 26, crit. It, um, it's actually just me being extremely kind. Oh no. Oh. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh no. <laughs> you're not upset, you're just disappointed. <laughs> yeah, Dragon's even like inching away from, from Lothia a little bit, just like, damn, all right, God. It's like it's like that roadhouse politeness. Like, I'm going to be polite until it is time to become unpolite. And when I do, you will not be able to imagine what that means. Um, so you're you're talking to the guy. Lothier. Yeah, you've absolutely been leading point. Shionibis has just been like the muscle behind you, like just just, you know, mean mugging. And the guy looks up to you and he goes, uh, okay, so uh I I'm I'm beginning to feel threatened and that this is possibly a a point in time where I can um make a deal for my life. Uh what what is it that you want? What? We a, a small group huddle. What do we actually want? Uh, I just want them to stop trying to kill us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's all uh, I want. Yeah, but we we should definitely send him back with a message and then follow him. Okay. Oh. Okay. That's you actually know. way smarter than any any of the <gasps> other stuff I was thinking. Wait a minute. What? And he looks at his hand. This ring lets me put magic into mundane objects. Huh? <gasps> <gasps> oh. And he's like, if we let you go, will you promise to deliver a message to your bosses? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell them that I, uh, I need to have a, a an op debriefing, of course. Okay. Dragon's gonna go over and grab something small and start to wrap it in like paper or clothes or leather or whatever he can find. And then he's going to cast Fireball on it. You're gonna so use that, that. When it's unwrapped, it explodes. So you're using, you're using that ring that basically lets you transfer a spell into like a bullet or some charge. Okay. So j I love this because. Technically, that's correct. The best kind of correct. Give me an Arcana check. Okay. Please be good. No, I'm hero pointing. Okay, that's better. It's not great, but it's uh, 22. The first one was a nat one. Oh, God. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, what level fires, uh, fireball spell? Third or fourth? Uh, I am casting it at third level. Okay. Because I don't have it at fourth level. Okay. So you see the ring start to glow and vibrate as the alloys inside are basically having this unusual uh, capitulation of this arcane energy. And then after a while, it's intense. It's your first time trying to channel this magic. It's very uh, rough. And then it starts to eventually diffuse into the item. And I'm just going to quickly, like, wrap it back up and, like... Okay. I would like you to deliver this to them. It's a message from us dissuading them from sending any more assassins. And he's just, like, casually, like, looking at the group. He, with a small he looks, smirk. He walks up. He picks it from your hands. I feel the need to report that I saw what you did, and I know that this is a I glowing ball the of other death. I walked oh, You walked in the other room. I'm sorry. I thought you said to the other end of the room. Other room's no. fine. My apologies. I went in the other room for sure. He doesn't <laughs> want him to see it because he casts it on the object and then like tries to wrap it up so that when it's unwrapped, the magic just goes. Poof. Absolutely perfect. Okay, yeah. So he takes it and he goes, "Okay, um, I need to go back to the island of the platinum hammer. This is going to take a while. Uh, it might take that's about fine. a month. Yeah, that's fine. But you're well, going not, to leave. Not if it takes a month. That's a long time. We're still going to get chased by assassins for an entire month. And we can deal with them 
he's swearing to take this back to his bosses and deliver a message, which can get it all canceled. But we can, you know, by then we'll be out of the city. It'll be fine. All right. So my and question... he just winks at Lothier. <laughs> the chaos. <laughs> my question is: Do we let him just walk unscathed? I mean, he's he's been attacked. Alona, what did you do to him? Got it. That does spell. <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> I could tell from the way you're looking at it. You, you steering lighted him, right? Like, you yeah. shot him with, like, a holy fire blast. Yeah, but it didn't do very much. <laughs> <laughs> it's still fire. <laughs> it's still burnt clothes and, and traumatized skin tissue. All right, then Alona looks at the remnants of whatever dresser that he popped out of and goes, did that. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. I have clothes in there. We'll go shopping. Uh, yeah. Dragon whispers to Morel again. Oh, you little turd! Why do you keep doing that? I see what? you. I have done no nothing at all. You keep get this assassin out of here. I've got questions. <laughs> I also have questions. It's crazy. Uh, so. As prompted to me uh, by the player uh, with agency in this scene, um, Morel kind of says as as uh, Dragon leaves, I, I like her a lot. I, she's like really important and, and special to me, like you know, like in a romantic way with with heart feelings. Um, you know, at first it was like, oh, someone I can find common peace and faith with, and then you know, just it kind of grows like things do in time. Mm -hmm. hmm? What? And what we, uh, hmm? Dragon is just looking at Alona. Like, would what you, do you mean? Do you she have anything? Mm -hmm. There's no Alona here. You don't have anything to respond to that with? Alona just hiding over there in that corner. Uh, everyone can still see you. Yeah. I don't think that's true at all. <laughs> Uh, I, I, just completely off topic and random. Do you happen to have a copy of the uh, of the spell Zone of Truth by any chance? No. Are you sure? All right. I learned this directly from my God because that's how clerics work. Fine. Whatever. We gotta find a library with some magical spells. <clears throat> Uh, also, right. Dragon stripped this guy of all of his weapons. Okay. Um, gosh, I'm trying to remember what he had on. I know he had uh, the pop-up blade. blade, the Assassin's Blade from Ferimus, and the gun. The anti-magic field uh, device was thrown out the window. Uh, so you find another one of those uh, uh, concealed wrist blades from Ferimus, a handgun stolen from the trenches uh, uh, armory, and whatever uniform he had while he was working as a sleeper agent at the Sherlton Hotel. What was his job? He was a bellhop. It was his job to get, have access to all the doors Con to give... Convenient. Wait, wait, yep. wait. <laughs> this convenient. man is dressed as a bellhop and he was hired as a bellhop? Yep. Guys, I just want to throw this out there. We will not be paying for any of these damages and we'll probably get some free food out of this. Yeah. Uh, yay! We should talk to management. <laughs> oh God. Oh God. Is Dragon? Oh God. Karen? <laughs> Dragon? What? Someone Photoshop Dragon with a Karen ha a haircut. <laughs> it's okay. Is this hair. guy still in the zone of truth? Yep. No. No, well, I think he moved. For yeah, we, we, yeah, we, we, oh, that's right. Someone moved him out yeah. of the zone of truth. Yeah. We let him go on his way. Wait, okay. you wanted to ask more questions? I just had something that popped up, but never mind. We chill. No, it's okay. Go ahead and ask go, it. Go, go, go. Don't, worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Okay. Mm, see, ma see, all of that protesting makes me want to know about it. Uh, A little bit, yeah. So the assassin's gone. But right? You don't have to tell me, but I'm just saying. I'm going to I'm going to say so that everyone gets a chance to ask a question okay. that they because the zone of truth is a pretty big zone that they have not left the zone entirely at this point okay. in time. Yeah. They have I, one foot left in the zone. Now yep. is your chance. I asked my question. So 
Who's in the zone? Auto zone. Damn it. I was trying so hard not to say it the whole time. Listen. Who was the agent again that hired us? Agent Pulver. Oh, yeah. Can I ask if he's a part of it? <gasps> trying to get us murdered? That is an excellent question. <laughs> yeah. The Reckoner says no. But we currently at this time have at least eight to ten operatives within the BAI working on different cases. That seems like something we need to Can report. I have their names? Uh, yeah, he will rattle off a bunch of names. Um, what they are are inconsequential, but what I need from everyone in this group is a... Perception or society check. Perception. Nat 20! Mm -hmm. Yay! That's incredible. That's I, I, I was like, I, I go, you know, my, neither of those are great for me. And then I looked down and was like, wait. That's amazing. Is that in society or is it in perception? Uh, 34. Society I know it's not a crit, but 34. So it's a, 30, th a 33 with, for me. 33. 33, 34. 30. 30. Perceptions. Thirty. I got a twenty-eight perception. That's still I would have got good. Yeah, it's really even good. Even with my nat twenty, I would have gotten a thirty perception. Yeah. So, <laughs> as the reckoner begins to start naming some of the names that they recall from like their unit of like fifty or sixty reckoners in the city, uh, alone you're like these names sound so familiar. Why do I recognize these names that he's talking about from the BAI? And everyone else, you start to have this slowly creeping realization. Every single name he's mentioned was in the camouflage dossier that was redacted by Emmerich. Specifically, oh. the group of the Dark Vault operations working on purging camouflage, the potential lich that she is, from New Jack City. Mmm. Oh. A spicy meatball. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. The spicy meatball is what I gave... Uh, oh, wait. He's still here. Never mind. I'll wait, I'll wait on that one. <laughs> oh, I just got it. <laughs> and Kylie didn't want to ask her a question. <laughs> I got nervous. I don't know. Very good. No, that's incredible. That was a great question. That was a great question. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're solving the issues. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just causing more of them as usual. <laughs> I just follow my heart, you know, in the moment. <laughs> that's, I mean, Randy, come on. That's what I'm definitely doing here. <laughs> just gave a guy a fireball message. Uh, in a month, yeah. that's gonna be really funny. <laughs> in a month, it's gonna... Hold on, I gotta it's make it. It's just the long game. It's just the yeah. long game. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I hope he gets a fast pass. <laughs> We'll yeah. just do one of our traveling episodes, and then and then all of a sudden we'll just hear about an explosion at a random place, and yeah. <laughs> I want oh. to know what Tobias's reaction is to that. Though. Oh yeah, about oh, yeah. the platinum hammer. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he's got his shield and his towel right You're now. You're not part of it, are you? Uh, Tobias looks jealous. I'm certainly not a part of that. I'm a member of the Grand Hammers. I'm way above that. But there are a lot of secrets I don't know. That I'm not involved with every aspect of the organization. I do know that there are corners of our order that works to respect those who worship more complicated and clandestine deities from any pantheon. I am not excited to see that this has come to your door. I don't know what to tell you. Who named the Grand Hammers? Uh, this is the first time I've heard of this. Oh, uh, we uh, so we are the we are the Grand. So I'm the Grand Hospitalier. I'm one of the five Grand Hammers of uh -huh. the 
uh, order of the Platinum Hammer, our, our distinctions and positions were made when the Sarkon was first instituted by the first Platinum Hammers, the Sarkon themselves, when they came from Acadia to find to to create the order. Okay. Uh, the morale, with the grand morale, the grand hospitalier, uh, you, do you really care about all this infrastructure? Uh, no, not, no, I'm reading not, the druid's face. He's very he's very honest. Thank you, Lothier. Yeah, not that much detail for sure. It's just like when usually when people like put grand or large or huge in front of something, they are typically <clears throat> compensating for something else. Oh. So we are one towel reveal away from proving you quite wrong. Do you want to look foolish in front of your friends? I wasn't saying Look, I wasn't saying specifically you. You didn't name it. If you had, then we, there might have been a different story. I'm, you know, just... Oh, no, he says it all the time, so... Uh, right. Oh, yeah, that's it's, true. It's like my go-to introduction. Hello, I'm Tobias Raphaels of House Raphaels, Grand Hospitalier of the Platinum Hammer. It's a whole shtick. Actually, I do yes. kind of have that theory about everyone with the really long names. But But also, just being, you know, whatever you say you are doesn't mean you're good at it. So, you know, you know, li listen, I did not come out here in a towel to be slandered by my compatriots. What is he? What even is this? In turn. No. Sure, it is. You are very lucky that you're my friend and you can say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right. right. Now that we're done making gone? fun of him, yeah, is the assassin yeah. gone yet? Assassin gone. Yes. Yeah, so if there's no other questions, he'll take the he'll take the care package and he'll go off the the order of the platinum hammer and let off a level three fireball underground. Because he uh, better not open that shit. I, mean, I have I haven't told them yet, and Dragon is dying yeah. to let them all know what he did. Yeah, I just know that you gave him a package, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean. I would think that was weird if somebody else gave him a package, but... I mean, no. If, if Dragon was given a package, I'm going to tell you I know something's up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so Dragon's going to watch him leave and be like, bye, have fun. And then, like, the door shuts. Yeah. All right, so... Guys, this yeah. ring, awesome. Okay? It's freaking awesome. I put a fireball in that package, so when it opens, it's just gonna go boom. What? <laughs> in the middle of the city? Mm, well, no, he's gonna deliver it to his bosses and whatever the blades thing is, and then it'll go off. But Not what I was expecting. What if there's other people there? Well, if they're in the blades thing with all the other other, other but, assassins, I'm imagining that. That's also we'll arcane magic. You we're, we're you're like setting off whatever huge alarms. Maybe even that spell will mutate or something. You made an entire mimic door. I did do that, and every By time accident. I've done this, I forgot about it. But we're really high up, so maybe it wasn't as strong because we're not near oh, the ground. Son of a bitch, BJ. I'm gonna say Randy to remind him. <laughs> no, no, we're all just yes anding and having fun. That's all this is. Yeah, no, I love this way better. It's screaming and fun. Yeah. It's not screaming and anger. No, not at all. Do we make, just make a mimic hotel? <laughs> no. Oh or, no, you didn't. Oh. Did he open it right outside the door? <laughs> no, I already I already rolled for that. He's gonna take the care package home. If you want to read the GM's brain, please make a perception check. Yes. He, oh, he, yes. He, yes. He is a yes. thirty. DC's okay. thirty. Easy. Yeah, there's no easy. Thirty-two. Not, not hitting that. Thirty-two. Okay. I got a fifteen. I'm not 33. reading PJ's brain anytime. Yes. Yeah. Thirty on the dot. Thirty on the dot. Okay, so. Everyone but Wes, and I don't mean Drago, I mean Wes, knows yeah. this out of character. Um, so you reminded me about the Wrath of Isix or the Resonance of Isix that's over New Jack City, where arcane magic has a lot of fluctuations, and it's half the reason why monsters constantly spew out to try and kill everyone. That's why we have the Night Witches and Camouflage to constantly stop them from killing everybody. So I took the D6 to roll and think to myself, okay, this is going to affect the Fireball spell, and I rolled, I rolled a 6. 
Well, the thing I'm not telling you up front, the lead that I'm burying here is that that D6 was to increase the spell level of the fireball. This gentleman is now walking around with a ninth level fireball. <laughs> and if you want to know how powerful that is, you take it at level three, which I want to say is about 66. Yeah, add six more D6s to that. Oh my this is now a 12d6 fire bomb that he's going to walk into the underground of the platinum hammer with in about a month's time it's going to detonate we're sinking oh, this island guys yeah you're killing you're killing the most the only true neutral holy organization on the entire fucking planet we're gonna start another world war god damn you despite oh Draco. look he's not <laughs> Look, he doesn't know what it did. Oh, he just sent a fireball to blow up the assassins. It's, it's fine. Poor sweet boy. It's fine. I, also, right. I have to look up something. Um, yeah, so for each level above the first, uh, above the third level, it adds two extra D6. Oh, okay. So that means it's an 18 D6 fireball. Mm -hmm. Okay, good to know. Let me write that down. Yep. 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 <laughs> Because it starts at 66 and then it goes mm -hmm. up by two uh, every time. Yep. Oh, uh, that's right. So at level of at 10th level fireball is a 20 d6 fireball. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if at one point in the game I ask you all to start rolling a certain number of d6s and you don't know why, take a get take a shot in the dark. I'm gonna forget about this. Yeah. I am. Yeah. I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna remind doing? myself about it. That's gonna be that's gonna be fun. Wow. Okay. Oh boy. <sighs> All right. You guys remember the platinum hammer? <laughs> yeah. A distant memory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, it'll be distant. Oh, no bias. No. It'll be, it'll be very distant when it goes off. <laughs> Is there like, could we like protect the rest of the city? Can we like try? It's inside of an under. He already said it's inside of an underground place. So that place is just gonna be gone. Well, gonna cave well, everything we, else is, in. well yeah. we don't know. We, even yeah. if we don't know that, if even if this were just a normal regular fireball, hearing that you just gave this to this man and he could go home and decide to open it, and him and his family that have nothing to do with anything that's going on will get hurt. What about their neighbors? What about their neighbor's neighbors? I told him not to open it. He's in the zone thing. Isn't that how it works? He said he wouldn't open it. That's how the he, zone he thing works, there. right? He has a point there. We're just gonna I let mean, this happen. He... Yes! We're blowing up the people who hired the assassins to send him after us. It'll take a little bit, but he's going. Then they won't send more assassins because I'll keep sending them fireball rocks. <laughs> Shouldn't maybe we should just? I'm just gonna. Let's consider this. Mm -hmm. We, our entire goal, is to stop a horrible god. Yes. From trying to murder the world. Right. And we've been looking for a weapon. Mm-hmm to aid us in that so yeah. why don't we chase down the assassin get this ring from him and just give it to the green king instead no, i have the ring you're talking about giving him the fireball rock oh yeah it's, oh it's just rock. a rock oh yeah oh, it, was just it, was like, it was just like no no i am wearing the ring this lets me put magic into things that aren't magic already oh oh no, no yeah, yeah yeah why don't we give the green king the rock instead of the assassin so we can make sure that the green king dies and then the assassin will just you know look i'll be honest if it all it took was one of my fireballs to blow up the green king i don't think we would be that concerned that's actually a really good point yeah i don't think that's going to kill a god i'm going to be honest but but i, I I'm just worried because every time you've used magic, it's done some crazy stuff. Yeah, right? but I mean, it's done some really good stuff. I mean, we have a new friend named Jeremy. Yes, 
who's prote Jeremy protecting a homicidal maniac. Exactly. So. You see, well, it, it's it's, I, it's all worked out so far. Mm -hmm. That's I all don't I'm know saying. If that's, but were you planning to do that? See, see, that's where because no. I remember your reaction in the room, and I remember you not looking as you oh, it was confused. horrifying. It yeah. was absolutely horrifying. So, but so, so, so what if you make out. another mimic, whatever, out there? What if that turns into something else? He what if you just he's, unleashed he's dinosaurs in downtown? He's going to step away from the dresser that he was near. <laughs> just in case. <laughs> I mean, then it sounds like the assassin's problem. Yep. What if there's people who get hurt in the way? That Hopefully like they're all Jack assassins. City problem. Well, hopefully the old the people that get hurt are the bad assassin people. But he said he was going to take it back to his bosses in the in the town. It, where the, where is the boss headquarters? Inside the Platinum Hammer? That, like, they're going to take this bomb into a religious place and blow things up. Uh, yes, but... If there is any damage to the surrounding structures, they'll just blame the assassins. That's not the point. I know. Look, all right, it might not have been the best conceived plan, but it's... Uh, look, it's just... A, it's a normal fireball that I put into the, to a rock, okay? It, we're going to send it there. It can't do that much damage. Like, I barely blew up an aqueduct. Oh my god, that's right. You did blow up an aqueduct. Yeah. Um, and it worked. We got their attention. Uh, yeah, it broke me out of jail. Well, like, I mean, you kind of did that yourself, but I... I, I was trying was to trying hype to you up, and <laughs> you're really just not helping it, you know? <laughs> okay. I was working on it. Should we Needed try to it. catch this assassin? Because if so, we need to get on his trail like now. Or do we let this go i will say i want to stop him dracon yeah i love your enthusiasm mm -hmm. and your ideas and your big heart and sometimes smooth brain <laughs> Right now, what we need to do uh -huh. is stop an assassin from possibly blowing up a religious space, because that goes against everything that at least I stand for. Is it a religious space, though? They said it was a, a, a guild of blades or whatever. Um, um, a den, a den of blades and a den of shadows. Those are still religious places. And while I do not agree with their practices, it is still a religious space and therefore deserves protection. Um, and considering that you are very powerful, um, beyond your recognition sometimes, I think it would be wise to go ahead and just, we'll keep it and we'll use it for something else. But our religious organizations that oppress others, do they really count? Yes. Wait. Yes. Wait. Mm. To be to be fair, to be fair, to be to be fair, they don't oppress anyone. They just kill them. Just put that out there. That's, Says Tobias, kind of backing that's away. That's pretty damn oppressive. No, no, no it's well, I mean, Hang it's on. it's removing. Fine, we can and... go get my rock back. Thank you. I'm not happy about it, though. I really wanted a surprise explosion in the assassins' faces, all right? Uh, and now you can use, like, double blades and just, like, stab, stab. Ooh, ooh, if you do that, can you wear a really cool, like, hood and jump from buildings? <gasps> I already <laughs> jumped from buildings. <laughs> but, like, with the little, like, you jump down and you hit him in the neck and you're like, hey, gosh. <laughs> and I'm like, huh? Hey? Yeah, I, I I suppose I could do that. Isn't but... that isn't that what, what what an assassin would say? Yeah, and he pulls I was out hiding his, in the closet. I got yeah. you. He pulls out his gunblade, but I have I mean this is way cooler to jump off of a roof and hit somebody with than the blade. The blade is definitely cool. 
because it's hidden and stuff, and you can like get it into places where this, you know, and he's holding it up. Blue, 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 this. Let's get the assassin! All right, fine. Right, right, okay, right, okay. Right, right. <laughs> Everyone needs a survival check because he is long gone yeah, with his payload. Yeah. All right. Oh yes. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Damn. Oh, 19 on the die face. Same here. Ooh. Same. 29. I wanted to roll back. Wait, we got three 19s? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Why can't I roll this good here, all the wait, time? Here, wait, why not? Ooh, okay. 32. I got a 29. All right. So uh, because you're in a penthouse suite on- 37. 30. God, okay. 24. Not bad. So because you're in the penthouse suite on the 60th floor- uh, the entire 60th floor is dedicated to this penthouse suite. So the minute you open your door, you're in the elevator. One excruciating elevator ride later, you finally get into the lobby. And there, just in the, the minute nick of time, you see the bellhop with this unusual shoebox leave the lobby through the front door and enter the city street. He's about to enter the city street. Mark his target. Hell yeah, that's taking like a ranger. Okay. So, yeah, plus two to checks to follow him and everything else. Yeah. I'm going to aid. No, I'm not. That was a four. No. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What are we rolling for? Uh, to try to chase. I'll the roll eyes. my athletics. This is literally your job. <laughs> uh, that's a 35. God damn. Uh, uh, Kylie, out of curiosity, give me that survival check with the, the plus two for the uh, uh, prey. Uh, 34? 34. Okay, perfect. So um, he kind of leaves through the, the, the revolving door and goes out to the street. Um, Sorry, 32. Sorry. 32. You and Dragon are able to follow him, track him, and then inadvertently from from the from the the, the, st the the stalking, move him into an alleyway. And from there, once he's a, like just kind of confused about how he got here, Dragon just spear tackles him. And uh, I need to know: do you do you want to pin him down, take the item from his hand? What do you want to do in this this second? I mean. Does he, do they not remember anything when they were in the zone of truth? Uh, to my knowledge, they do. They to do. my knowledge, they remember okay. everything. They remember so yeah, he's not going to tackle him because the dude's... I mean, he thinks it's a normal fireball, but that's still scary enough to drag on. He doesn't know, know it's a nuclear fireball. But he's not going to tackle him to ground because he doesn't want to knock that thing around. Uh, mm -hmm. So he's going to run up and just kind of like grab him by the shoulder and take the box, like strip the box from his hands. Be like, hold up! Yeah, we can't send you with this message anymore. It's, we've got it something different. Just tell them that we know about all their assassins. Tell your bosses this. We know about all their assassins. And coming after us is not a financial, uh, not a good financial decision. Because you guys have to be trained a lot, right? I mean, yeah, but honestly, he's using the, the accent that he uses when he's outside yeah. in, in New Jack City. Yeah, I mean, honestly, if I'm if I'm being honest, like most of us are just refugees from Faramis or like other fallen assassination guilds or hell, even like murder cults. Like, you know, we just got to have a job. We got all these skills. We got nowhere to go. So we go to the Reckoners. They they, they pay well. We believe in the same you know tenets of screw you. You're an asshole. Maybe you should die, but someone should pay me first. You know, that kind of thing. You, you know, you guys, you told us about all the <laughs> other people in the BAI. You could just be good at your job at the BAI or an organization like that that requires your skills and will pay you good money for not murdering people and possibly getting yourself murdered. I mean, I don't know if these lapels and great little uh, uh, dually deads on my, on my shoulder pads here confuse you. Uh, I'm not an admiral. I'm a bellhop. Right. What I'm uh, saying is... You were a bellhop because no one knew about your skills as an assassin. However, you could probably get hired by one of these lovely weapon companies in New Jack City to test out their weaponry as someone who is an experienced assassin. They hey, pay very on. good money for consultants, I know. Come on, surely you got, like, a family. You don't want them to just... You all of a sudden just disappear. 
and just end up at the bottom of yeah, a lake like, somewhere. Or the bottom of a tower like those three other guys. Or, like, like the other people. We Look. can't see them, can we? Uh, you two give me perception or survival checks to catch up, but I would imagine oh. because of their success, they, they got there first. <laughs> I definitely don't. I, I did not perceive that. All right. Wow. That was just me telling a imaginary story to myself. <laughs> <laughs> so the the reckoner says, look, I got I got like this cousin who lives on one of the pirate cities, you know, uh, I, I didn't like it. So I got out while I could. And I happened to land on the island and I got a job, you know, they still in the pirate city, you know, and it's hard living in one of those floating cities in the ocean because like you know the nomads they just gotta do whatever trade they gotta do so i i give some of my gold back to them i kick i give them a kickback yeah i got someone i care about but yeah. like that's it so what happens if you die the money well, stops I, going i i mean i suppose look if you if you got someone that you can recommend me to i'll consider it but right now i'm a part of an underground organization that pays me pretty well to make sure jackasses stay dead can I pull out that business card from Samantha? Go right ahead. Give me a diplomacy Aww. check with a plus two. Yeah. Also, I forgot this world had pirate cities. <laughs> 27. That's a new to me. Thanks. It's great. So you pull out the card, and what do you say to them? You know, if you really want to get out of this business, like, there's someone that you might want to talk to. Just saying. Because this life's hard, I'm going to be honest. We've both been there. You see, look at Dragon. Yeah, I didn't live through the first time, so I know. I need both of you to roll for aid. Wait, who? Oh, oh. Shionibus and West, my apologies. So, uh, Shionibus and, and Dragon. Um, diplomacy. Oh, God. Okay, that's a dirty 20. That is also a dirty 20. You're convincing him to turn his life around, guys. <laughs> and then we shall murder him. <laughs> I mean, look, this is basically fable rules. You can have whatever story you want, and when that when that side quest is over, if you want to kill the NPC, that's on you. But you have to live with that. Did love that game. Stab it. That's a great game. It's such a good I game. I definitely thought you said stab it, Sydney, and I was like, oh, if you I, insist. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> Ching -ching, don't mind if I do. I <laughs> Here I go, stabbing play. again. I could never play Evil Runs of Fable. I played that game so many freaking times. Fable Same. 2 specifically. I could never do an Evil Run. I can't. I, I, I can't either. Wait, I, why, why, you guys were meant to be friends. Yeah, for real. I would play Mass Effect and try and do Renegade, and I would end up having to reload my game so many times from instinctively doing the good options. Me. Yeah, and yep. I just felt bad sometimes. I was like... Yeah. This is a great option, but no, I would not say that. That's rude. <laughs> That's I played, rude. I played, I played table three with a friend, and we we had to play table three twice because I was I was the good one, they were the not good one, and so we went through the good story. We went through the good aligned story and the evil aligned story. Uh, that was the only way we got to see both endings. Anyway, uh, okay, cool. So he looks at you. He looks at the card. He looks back at you, Sean Bess, and he kind of nods and he goes. You know, you all make some really good points. And um, I, mean, I kind of like this city. I've been working here for like for like, like eight months waiting for y'all to show up. I don't want to leave it, but you know, it's a job. Maybe maybe I'll see if the Stokes are hiring a uh, consultant or maybe even a field operator or something. And, and you know, if I, if I mention you guys by name, maybe that'll get me in the door and, and they'll listen to me a little bit. He walks away from you, nodding, with the kind of heavy nod of someone who is terrified of the positive thing they're doing in their life. We've all been there. We all know it. When you know tomorrow is going to be a dangerous but good day. It's not easy. And he kind of nods and walks. Now, it doesn't matter what you're doing for us tonight. You're going to be telling me about that in a bit. But here's a cutscene that you're not going to get to see. 
The Reckoner. Some days, time, months, who knows? Maybe after you leave New Jack City, maybe live here forever, who knows? But the next day, when you're not paying attention, he walks to Stokes. He shows them the card. He mentions your name. The desk looks confused. They call over uh, Samantha Stokes. She smiles politely, pulls him into an office. After a one-hour interview process later, he gets the job as one of the lead developing techs of uh, neutralizing and anti-agent weapons in the field. He is no longer a Reckoner. He is now a full-time developer at Stokes Industries. That's awesome. I'm really glad we didn't blow him up. (laughs) (laughs) Just the funniest thing about that scene is that it wasn't the goody two-shoes convincing him to do it. No, no, no. It was the former. It was you guys. <laughs> you guys. Yeah, it was the murder hobos. Yep. Look, I don't murder hobo everyone. All right, it's only it's but very select people. But when I do, <laughs> when I do, they stay dead. Yeah, and so does the town that they came from. <laughs> there you go. Uh. Oh, fuck you, Inshallator. Oh, <laughs> fuck you, <Inshallator. laughs> fuck that place. I agree. Sorry. Oh man, I'm gonna be honest though. Like hearing y'all talk about Inshallator was dope. Like everything you all did in that city, that that crazy friggin' city was so cool. Um, I still have to say, like one of my favorite moments was Shiona versus one woman Black Widow breakout from prison in the Demon oh. Tower, where she's like free falling and killing, like oh, beating the shit cool. out of a like a a Demon Terminator. Really the whole cool. fall down. As the ground was getting closer, that's all I was thinking about. I was like, background's getting awfully close. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, cool. That's going to give you some uh, XP perks. So, Ooh. that being said, he leaves. Now, you don't know this. This is just one of those cutscenes of like, this happens in the world around you as you influence it. But now we're back to this moment here. You four are back together on the Sherlton. I'm going to say the front of the building at this point in time. Uh, there are three bodies splattered on the sidewalk slash street uh, as it was not a totally clean landing. Uh, and it's almost, it's getting pretty late. So what are you going to do? Uh, should we hide these? Should we hide these guys? I mean, mm. uh, you want to go around and for like the next two hours picking up little pieces of people no 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 no, no, no. Just... i was thinking like the main but this mass. city's also really busy i don't think they sleep it, it, uh dragon's also probably... like looking around like what main piece you know what we should do we need to call agent pulver yeah. explain to him what happened explain to him about more you know assassins in the city and what we need to do is go upstairs and take a nap that agree. I agree with that. Also, you know, I'm Dragon's still holding the box and like absent mindedly. Like, <laughs> like, uh, like, yeah, I'm actually really glad. It seemed like a nice guy. I'm glad we didn't blow him up. Uh, oh. How are we gonna take a nap when our oh. windows are busted open? Um, we've slept in the draft before. We've slept outside. Doesn't that mean assassins can get to us easier though? <laughs> they they scaled, scaled the building. building? <laughs> I don't know. They're assassins. You gotta do what you gotta do. Um, Alona opens her bag of holding. What do I do with... Are you sure you want me to put this in there? It's a stable room. This is very... Okay. Unstable, potentially? It's not going to go off unless someone opens it, right? That's what you That's what you did to it. Yeah. There you go. If a bomb explodes in a bag of holding. (laughs) (laughs) Asking the real questions. Well, the good news, since you want to talk physics, the bag of holding has no oxygen in it, and the fireball spell is real fire. However, it's only ignition, not conflagration. So the initial impact will go off, but there will be no residual burning or side effects, which means, yes, the kinetic energy will destroy most of the things in the bag of holding, but there will be no continuation burn or any other further damage, You will, and you will have no idea. 
you'll open it one day and it just like smokes leaves. Well, well, one well, you, you know what's in there? <laughs> that entire database that we put of mm -hmm. information. Ooh, that's like why I need to study that. <laughs> that's why Dragon's like, I don't necessarily want to do that. It's listen, the bag of holding. It doesn't get jostled around. It doesn't move. It is like a pocket dimension in this bag. That's fine. There's no living creatures in your pocket dimension that would might get into things. There's no oxygen. Uh huh. Have you met a demon before? Actually, I, I met. I don't know if they were demons. Whatever the, your dad, big dad was. Not, uh, look. All, yeah, all I'm saying is I don't know what's in there. I haven't been in the pocket dimension. We just told you it is nothing but sensitive information and smut. Okay, it's fine. <laughs> all right, fine. <laughs> okay, I, I, now, out of curiosity, <laughs> since, you know, everyone got all higgledy-piggledy about, about sending this to the Assassin's Guild, <laughs> where else could we send this? That wouldn't be so against the rules. The Red Waste. I mean, what? Like, is there a specific person that you guys just really don't like? With a mailing Actor address. Actor <laughs> But there's innocent people that live in Shellator, too. So like, right, you know, but we no could send it to the royal families in a really <laughs> nice box. They're all dicks. <gasps> What about the people that work for the nice families? They're kind of nice. Yeah. And not nice families. They're not nice families. I could send it to the people who, well, pretty much kept me prisoner for years and years and years. You could do that. Or we could we'll save just put it. it. Yeah, well, it's fine. We'll just put it we'll save in, it. The, in the bag. We'll save it. Okay. <laughs> Nap time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do that GM hand wipe, woo, and say that you go back upstairs. Uh, Agent Pulver sees the bodies uh, on the ground after you call him, and he's wearing his trench coat, his hat, and he takes his hat off, and he throws it on the ground. And I wish I could say this. It doesn't make any sense in our world, but I just want him to go, Jesus fucking Christ, but he can't say that. So he's going to say, what in the holy fuck? No, what in the scientific fuck is that? That's what he said. That's his swear word. And uh, he calls a cleanup crew. <laughs> what? Science. <laughs> what What in the science? <laughs> Let Sorry. the bodies hit the floor. Let the bodies hit the floor. <laughs> Uh, a cleaning crew comes, takes the bodies, yeah, they clean up the glass. Do they fix Rain our window? Did that That's it. Was that Randy? Do they fix our window? Um, they they do their best to have a crew basically do a, a, a fast boarding job. Just, you know, put some paint nails and plywood up. They'll fix it like tomorrow when you're gone and they can kind of explain like, oh yeah, partiers, you know how it is. Um... Dragon also wants to complain. He wants to go a little Karen. <laughs> Dragon wants to Karen to Agent Pulver? Not to Agent Pulver. Agent Pulver, he wants everybody, he kind of whispers, he's like, we should probably tell him the names of the people we got. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. To the hotel specifically, because, like, they, they got through security, they went up to the penthouse suite, and we got attacked by assassins. They went we got the elevator. By four. Yeah, the That's elevator, nice. they didn't come in from the outside. It's not like they broke in. You can understand that. But they got past security, and there were people like there was one of them was a cook, one of them was was a bellhop, one was a chauffeur, a chef. yeah. So did yeah you see you see a woman with like short red hair and like big big Coke bottle glasses just looking at you go y'all going, all right sir, uh, it seems that the uh, people who have broken in have been dealt with. Um, You're uh, so. Uh, we are going to comp a few things to your room. We're very sorry. We want to make sure you have the best service possible. But we are not liable for any hiring practices that may or may not officially hear to or rumored to be assassins without our knowledge. That's fine. We're very sorry. No, you're you're completely fine. That, that's okay. I just was hoping for some food and snacks and things as a, a complimentary thing because, you know, assassins that worked for you guys tried to kill us. Hey, Dragon. Yeah. 
Can you get me a dress out of this? <laughs> yeah. I'm um, one. Yeah, and um, my friend's clothing were, was destroyed as mm-hmm. well, and we were just like replacements uh, for that. They were, they were pretty also, high, squ- high, uh, high tier. High very quality. high quality, very, very high in quality. fashion mm-hmm. right now. Um, yeah. Shionibus is, was storing some stuff in my closet as well, mm-hmm. and it yep. was also destroyed. Yep. Lots and, of set of blaze. Lots and of so clothes. was Shame. yes, and so was Lothier's nice suit and uh, Morel's oh, really oh, nice suit and and uh, and Morel's dancing shoes and um, um Shame. and and and, Dra- and Dra- Dragon. Dragon's gonna start looking at you guys like you're being the Karens right now, <laughs> <laughs> just like. All right. Yes, clothing was destroyed. So if if there's any chance you could send up some options, that would be fantastic. Um, you know, unless you want a bunch of naked people walking around your hotel, but I don't think that'd be great for business. Or it might be really good for business. Uh, I, 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 I look over at Tobias, who's starting to peek out of, like, a corner. <laughs> <and I'm> like, <laughs> did someone say naked? Well, I'm so glad you did. Uh, no, uh, so they will send up three uh, outfits for each person, because it is much easier to just buy three very, very nice tailored suits than to deal with this headache. So each of you will be getting three slots that you can put in your equipment uh, sheet for three New Jack City AU costumes. They can be dresses, they can be suits, they can be whatever you want. Three of the finest uh, diesel punk industrial era high fashion. And he's gonna kind of like, he's gonna kind of look back and be like, we good, we're getting food and, and clothing. Thank you, Dragon. This was a very big wrinkle brain moment. Hashtag wrinkle brain. Thanks. Hashtag wrinkle brain. That'd be our, Good. our transition call to whoever right. we're rating. So, wipe. Uh, right, so that all happens. Very, you, good, very good wrinkle brains. You go to bed and... Oh yeah, that right call wrinkle brains. We can, we can bring that up later and see that, if that still jives. Uh, but you also sleep well, you get a long rest. So you get, everything comes back from a long rest. You also get three suits. You get the wooded up door, the, the windows, which kind of make for a weird reminder first thing in the morning. But, you know, it's better than being dead. So you have a whole new day ahead of you. Hmm. The question is, with the assassins that are still left in the city, the one whose life you turned around unbeknownst to you, what do you do? What's up, Kylie? Can, at some point, and I can do this alone, or if someone wants to join me, it's fine. I want to go to, like, a library. And <laughs> I know, I know, and yellow page these people and find out where they live out of the guys who are in the BAI. <laughs> okay. Uh, Give me a deception check for that because i imagine you're you're kind of getting that information from the phone call yeah or like if it just gives an address like so and so this number lives at this house or if i need can go to the library because it'd be might be public knowledge okay 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 Drake so then let's to go to the library just okay so for this i'll give you an option deception if you contact them and lie to them to get the information or if you research as much as you can, uh, either, I mean, library of lore if you have it, or uh, perception to search for it. We're gonna do perception. I can't, I can't. Can I help? Uh, sure, uh, what, do you, what do you want to roll to help? Perception. All right, go right ahead. Double perceive. Yes, my perceives is high. Uh, 32. 32. <laughs> Hey yo! Hey yo! Okay. Uh, Dragon, you said you were going too, right? I would like to go too. Yeah, Dragon's going to be looking for <clears throat> spell books. Okay. Um, In the city that outlaws magic, but they don't outlaw get... knowledge. Well, and in a place that is surrounded constantly by magic, you want to be able to recognize it, so they might have a lot of tomes on magic. In the restricted section, possibly. But uh, our friend could probably get us access to that. So give me a perception check on that. Um, the information will be limited when played right now. Uh, okay, so. Uh, what? Hello. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. 
the nerd wants to come with us. Oh, the nerd wants to go to the library. Shocking. Okay. <laughs> Morals for spring. Groundbreaking. <laughs> yes, I am the nerd, and I would like to go to the library. And I rolled a 36 perception. Of course you did. I rolled a 24. Okay. And that's good for me. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, it is. Doing that's not very perceptive. So Sydney, Randy, and Kylie, you by your powers combined have critically succeeded the check you need. Uh, so what I want, just as a reminder, so I can give you the best information I possibly can without without wasting much time. You you want to know their name and address and like anything else? Yeah, because we just we already know their names, right? The yeah. Name that he gave, yeah. So I just, I want an address. Okay, okay. Um, you find that most of them, because they are agents of the BAI, the Bureau, they don't have any published addresses. There is, however, a uh, sort of go-to halfway house that the aid, that the Bureau has in the city where a lot of the agents will crash. Uh, it's not their domicile, but it is the closest thing to a uh, released location that they will give the populace. You can go to this location because it's well known. However, it's also highly guarded and there's a ton of agents coming and going. The likelihood of them being there, the likelihood of other agents being there, you know, you're gonna be in a very interesting situation. Were there pictures of these agents in those books? For that critical, yes, you definitely get uh, pictures of them. Does cool. Dragon know what Giannibus is researching? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. But, like, you, she's yeah. going to recruit you into this. Okay. So, don't okay. you worry. Uh, so, yeah, you get pick, you get photo IDs. This will give you bonuses to perception to track or bonuses to survival to track. Basically, you know them. You know how to recognize them better. You all are going to get bonuses to find them. You know what this reminds me of? Like a montage of just people like leaning over a big table and like moving pictures around and being like, yeah. And then at the end, they sit there with a, a, like a coffee. We found him. <laughs> we we found got him, him boys. <laughs> yeah. Just everyone like, holy shit, that's Jason Bourne. <laughs> um, so you got that. Dragon, you're looking for magic tomes in this library they look at you and they go no I'm, no I'm no right, we don't we i'm don't writing got a that. book you I, I don't care we don't got that you want the history of the city and why we don't have it here you can look at that go to history go down uh go i think i think of the 13 13.75 go to 13.75 to 13.90s those are the history books so why we don't have freaking magic tomes in the library of the city that was almost destroyed by the deity of magic i guess i'm just a little disappointed that you would restrict knowledge is all Sir, you can be as disappointed as you want to be. If my ass doesn't explode into a fireball, I'm okay with you being disappointed. Dragon looks back to see if Alona's around with the bag. No, <laughs> no he's just not. like, like in his head, he's thinking, "Oh, that might be a bigger possibility than you think." <laughs> <laughs> the 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 librarian at the desk says, says "Look, the only person here." Is allowed to have any knowledge of magic whatsoever, those who are doing their job at the BAI. If anyone's going to have the book you're looking for, it's them. But I honestly wish the best luck in science to you if you're going to go to the BAI and actually try to get a look at the books. Where are we supposed to go to the BAI? Yeah, surprise. We and have a secret door yeah, into the BAI. He's, he's going to put his hand down and just kind of lean on the counter. Oh, you'd be surprised how easy that's going to be. And he's going to just turn and walk away. <laughs> <laughs> and she and she's just sitting going like like you're gonna say like the like the tongue like kind of she goes i know i went to college for library scientists and arts and right now i freaking hate it i freaking <laughs> hate it alona walks up right after toddle hello hello i was wondering if you had any books on magic, just kidding. Um, I was wondering <laughs> if you had any books on the history of Wormkin. You know, I think I think we got one book 
that's a book in the back. Is it, it? It's too big to put on the shelves. Yeah, I'll get. I'll get it. To, I'll get it. To you. You, you want? You want to check it out? Yeah, I'd love to follow you back and take a look at it. You, I'm sorry for, for security reasons. You have to stay here. I might have to go get it myself. Oh, are you sure? I'm also a librarian. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a deception check. I'm kind of not wrong. Can I <laughs> diplomacy diplomacy check? I spent a lot of times, a lot of time in the but, library. But are you but are you being honest or are you trying to coerce? I'm coercing. <laughs> yeah. But I spent so much time in the library. Um, you know? And that is the wrong I didn't upgrade that. Um, what is, um, 22. Okay. Okay. Oh, one second. I need to consult my own GM cheat sheet here because I can only assume the number my brain is supposed to be. <laughs> just, as I, just as I suspected. Okay. So, uh, why are you so cool? You were just spinning it around. <laughs> it was cool. <laughs> Oh god, I wish I could say something dope like I worked in a pizza shop, but I didn't. Um, so she looks at you and she says, It's not like we got a union or nothing. And I'm sorry, sweetie, but like I've been working here for like eight years and I'd never seen you before. Oh, oh, I'm not a librarian from here. No, yeah, of course. I don't look like I belong here at all. I'm from Orr. That's so us. That's so I'm that's I love that for you. But unfortunately, around here, like, I don't, don't, that's, I mean, if someone at your library can send us a formal acquisition slip to borrow our book, we can have an exchange program, but I'm sorry, this is kicked in the back for a reason. Hold up. I bring it real close, and I tell her, I have the biggest collection of foreign smut you've ever seen in your entire life. In the my bag and if you let me come back there with you just to take a peek at what you have because it's so interesting to me and i'm just a tourist here and i want to make it worth my time i will let you take one of those books from my copy make a diplomacy check with a plus two this is also me just going to throw this out there you're going to pull a smut book out of your magic bag the one that holds the 18d6 weapons of mass fireball destruction. You said Remember? diplomacy check with a plus two. Mm -hmm. I'm using a hero point. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Uh, diplomacy is not that bad for me, actually. Um, I have a plus 13. So it's a 26? Okay. Pretty good. So she looks at you for a second. She gives you a knowing glance. She looks around very subtly. All right. I'm a fast reader and I have a very hungry mind. I want three books on the counter right now and I'll let you get a peek. I have the perfect series for you. Yeah. And she carefully rummages through her bag and finds a three part series of roses in the rookery and hands them over and says i think you would really enjoy this it is very um as my um barbarian friend was saying earlier um very verbose uh now here's my question to you sydney roses in the rookery hero point for the title thank you um do you want to tell me right now what this, you know, just general shorthand, what this book series is about, or do you want me to make that? Do you want me to? You just make that up, because I'm going to be honest. I just wanted to go for alliteration. I don't really remember at this point in time what a rookery actually is. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to I have to look up rookery right now, because I have so many different connotations for what a rookery is. I don't want to get it wrong. Uh. <laughs> All right, now. I love you guys. Okay. I love you guys okay. Too. <sighs> All right. <clears throat> so, 
you slide three books over to her and she opens it up and starts reading it and she's she says back to you a decadent tale of passion denied and desire fulfilled as a powerful warlord falls in love with a slum girl who lives in a small collection of housing units or a, a, a nest of of small plants or other such things as rookery is defined as uh, uh, though there's obviously danger in his wild ways, she finds something truly human about him. His lustful gaze. <laughs> yes! yes! Uh... She, me she measures up these three thick, smutty tomes, and she goes... I see you are a lady of taste as well. Come right this way and don't talk to me. <laughs> you know what's funny? Um, this is not how I built a loan out. Um... <laughs> yeah, we're taking some like season two, or season three arc attractions. But that happens. You know, we're having a good time. She's, you know what? That's fine. It's like kind of character, like retcon development. <laughs> um, we just don't acknowledge. Like, or Alona character never growth. Or character There's... growth. We just never would have acknowledged before this that Alona um, had a obsession with like romance novels. But you know what? It makes sense. She was locked in a, in a temple for her whole life and only could live vicariously through books. That is true to how I built her. I, I gotta say, I don't know how much you're retconning. I, I you know, I didn't get to see <laughs> everything from that. But how many people do you know that are super super shy, but then have the largest smut collection ever? All of them. All of them. I'm All just saying, them. I don't even know if you have to retcon anything. Uh, PJ You're was right. just, just saying all of them. And well, I don't care. So Put it on blast <laughs> at everybody. All of them. <laughs> and also, just if I may, a little behind the curtain here, years ago, um, when we were building the Pantheon, we did make it canon that half and a deer, the married couple of the deities of the water half and nature and uh, have a bunch of sexy, steamy romance novels written about them. It's very possible that I'm sure being deities and being romance novels, who knows? But that being said, she takes you in the back to uh, this giant stacks of books in this uh, big linoleum tiled floor with horrible. Uh, fluorescent lighting and these big ugly stacks and she walks up to one of these shelves and gets off this massive leather tome i, I mean it, it's held together by rope and stitching and arcane sigils and and you know seals with with large uh, uh rituals drawn on the seals and she slams it down and she says all right i'm gonna take these three books I'm going to read them in private. Linda, Linda, I'm going to my 30. I know it's early. I'll eat at my desk. I don't care. I'll be back in 30 minutes. And that's all you got. Okay, sweetie pie, have a great time. Bye. And she just walks off. I love that she's going to read three books in 30 minutes while eating her lunch. Listen. That woman is efficient at everything. <laughs> Yeah, I really have mad respect. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> how much can I get from this book in 30 minutes? Uh, that depends. Uh, if you're speed reading it uh, for text and context, I will say that could be a... If you have lore, academia, library lore, the DCB lower. If not, uh, perception check. I have elvish lore and origin lore. Oh, no. Probably not going to work. Well... Uh... No, no, that's not gonna work. Give me, give me the other one. Perception. Perception. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why does this keep? I love this dice because I keep rolling nineteens. <laughs> um, this makes me so happy because also since we leveled up, my perception's now a plus seventeen, so that makes it a thirty-six. God damn. Uh, I mean, just, so much since you've gotten a critical on that is there anything you specifically want to know 
Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything in here about notable wormkin specifically. Like a general history is good, but I want to know if Old Man Tanin is a person that is mentioned and also his friend Arbod. Is it Arbad or Ab Arbod? It's all right, so uh it's Arbod, but okay. I'm also with my furthering education and, and personalizing uh, personal education, I think even that's incorrect. I think it's supposed okay. to pronounce like Arbod, but I'm Let's go with my previous butchering of Arbod. Okay. Got it. Cool. I'm trying to see if he's in this book. All right. Uh, yes. They absolutely both are. There's uh, a few other Wormkin names of note from other parts of history all over the world. Uh, there's even a theory by one of the um, uh, great... Uh, thinkers of Shin that uh, the dragon is so constant in every mythology because the Wormkin and the dragon gods and Ozma and every single dragon entity is so prevalent in every part of the human makeup mm -hmm. uh, or the, the world history. Tenin is definitely there. You even see some old scribblings from uh, one of his old journals about uh, a horrible nightmare that he cannot talk about. And then you see something from the journal of Arbad himself. And as it reads out, it says, uh, I will always stand by a brother, a sister, anyone that I have fought next to, prayed next to, ate next to, looked up at the stars in the sky at night is someone that I will have my blood be with forever. I love them. Today is a day where I must kill brothers and sisters. Today is the day that I must kill God. And then you see, like, the next page, it continues. I have single-handedly withdrew the blade from the chest of Kormat. I stood watch as the humans, the elves, the dwarves every walk of life killed a god this was never supposed to happen i trusted azamat when we sealed the last seal and let that nightmare go away i trusted my grandfather i trusted the one who gave me life that this was what we were supposed to do save this world and then I looked at the son of my grandfather and I slew him. I slew him with thousands of mortals. This is not supposed to be possible. And I knew him. I call him by name, Koromat. You were a friend. One that I would give my blood to as I would any other. You talked about your plans. You talked about your fail safes. You talked about your machinations. You talked about the one that already worked and that no one knew. And I am writing this to remind myself of hope. Hope that as I killed you with everyone else, that one of your fail safes is still working. I just pray, O oh corrupter, that if this is true, you will find me when the time is ready. And I will stand by your side. You will have my blood and I will have yours. And together we will kill these folk that think they dare get to kill gods. Is there anything in here about Cormont's failsafes or what they could be? Anything? Nothing of deeper knowledge, but it does state that there's a very specific location of the the, the killing of Koromat. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to need a master DC survival check, a DC 30 survival check for you to figure out where that location is in a modern context. <sighs> okay, let me do this because I don't... No, I'm not going to make it, I don't think. You said survival, DC 30. Mm. No, that's 24.
All right. Don't know where it is. Do I know where it is in the fantasy world? And and sorry, do I know where it is in the past? Or is it, I just have no. Arba here. describes the location as being uh, the place where the father and son meet the ocean. Oh. A place where tears give call. What does that mean for those of us who have very smooth brains when it comes to this? You said the place with tears, what? Uh, where tears give call, where father and son meets the ocean. That's not what you said. Wait. Yeah, where father Wait. and son, where father and son meet the ocean, where tears give call. Where tears give call. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. You've just flipped it around, and that's why I was like, wait. That's that's very really, uh Give me a religion um, check really fast. A religion check. Ooh, I am a religious person. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't mean you're not religious. Not today. <laughs> today I said, who knows anything? No, yeah, not one. Not one? Okay. Yep. I don't know anything. Then that's up for... Sitting in real life. Cool, cool. Awesome. Not for me. So anything I'm else? A smooth brain right now. <laughs> anything else you want from this book uh, as time is passing? No. Oh, okay. No, that's it. I don't have anything else I can think of. Sounds cool, cool, cool. So we're going to take our five-minute break. When we come back, we are going to return to uh, the hero's investigations, uh, looking into the assassins that are probably uh, working with the BIA. Well, working Hold! around the BIA. Hold. Hold. I forgot. Okay. I have a hero point from the smut. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What One a, smut point. What a clinch pull. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. Another 19. No way. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, Hold on. Okay. I got to open up something on my on my computer really fast while I, I look for it. I still have to pee so bad. It's okay. So do I. We can tell you what. We when can... we come back, yeah. we're going to do, we're going to go into that hero point roll and what that means. We're going to come back in five minutes because apparently everyone's got to pee. So we'll see you then. <laughs> All right. Hello and thank you, uh, everyone. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for that uh, little break. We are back and... Uh, uh, everyone needs a five minute, right? So we took a quick brief pause just before Alona was to make that religion check, which is a die face 19 for a total of 38, 38. I have, um, my religion is a plus 19. You remember suddenly some words that seem to echo in your head, very familiar, but have been absent for a while when called father bound. The child will go. The horizons, falling suns, the whole of the sky, never ending the cycle will move, rotating towards the end until cataclysm falls, suns and suns, and thus the cycle ends them all. You start to remember this as Arbod reflects on the location of the death of Kormat being where father and sons are meet and where tears are called. Wait, so that part specifically like the father and son where tears are called is referring to the death of Koromat because Koromat is Azamat's son I mean right now it's just speculation you have to ask Koromat well I don't want to do that <laughs> um, <laughs> um okay so that puts things in perspective. Um, I should have used the hero point to figure out where it actually fucking was. Um, but that's good. The ninth circle prophecy is about Azamat. 
and Korama. Wait a sec, not the entire thing though. Wait, can you mm -hmm. can you send the ninth circle prophecy in the chat again, please? Because we do not have access to it. The ninth ninth cycle? Yeah, no problem. Cycle. Right now. Yeah. Ninth cycle. It's right. Because because the ninth circle of hell is very different than the ninth cycle prophecy. I don't I don't think anyone wants to go to the ninth circle of hell. Yeah. No thanks. Been That's there, like done door. that. Yeah, I, I have not <laughs> and don't wish to. <laughs> yeah, I'm good on that one too. Have a good time. All right, I'm gonna Nobody share this. You know, I'm gonna put it in the Facebook private chat just so it doesn't okay. get uh, involved in the thing. But yeah, so I'm gonna put that up there. Uh, okay. Anyone else have any other business uh, while in the library? And please correct me if I forgot something or didn't address anything yet. I'm going to mosey on over to Dragon. Um, not say a damn thing, and just slide over the pictures. What are they pictures of again? The oh, BAI the, agents. the BAI agents who are uh, really assassins. Yeah. Uh, some nice friends you met. Oh, these, I, I, I mold like mosey on over there too, ah, and I'm like, got it. All right. Yeah. So, are we gonna take these to Pulver? Not exactly. Uh, I mean, I feel like there's no really talking to these, these, she's gonna kind of look around to see if there's anyone else around talking these guys out of what they're doing like we did the last one. I mean, um, I, I wasn't planning on doing that. I was just gonna have Pulver arrest them and then we could interrogate him. I don't know if they'd go down that easily though. So like the original plan was just like, find out where they live and then move on to the next one. Right. Out of and curiosity, that, does Dragon know that about, like, what they are a part of? Because he didn't recall that. The for clarification, you mean about the Reckoners themselves coming no, from no, the, no. the group? The, this no. group was in charge of trying to get rid of camouflage. Oh, that group. Um, because that's, I what, that's say... who these guys are. Yeah, yeah. The, these members of the Reckoners are also working on the team that is. Dedic that dedicated, but working on the operation to remove camouflage. Yeah. To kill her again. Kind of. Uh, would Dragon know that? I, I know there's a part in last episode where uh, Sam had the notes on that. I know a few people looked at it. I don't recall if we were there at the time, but... I mean, uh, it's it's. I, I would say if anyone in the group wants to tell you that, you can easily corroborate that. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna just play it as though he doesn't. Um. All right. So, what? You just want to take him out? I feel like that's gonna be the easiest way. That already gets rid of eight. Right, but they're BAI agents, even if they are undercover assassins, and we can't. I don't just don't think it would be a great idea if we weren't around town murdering BAI agents, regardless hey, if they're corrupt or not. You were the one that I had wholeheartedly thought you were going to be all for this, and here you are telling me no, and I should knew I should have just gone to Lothier, and I didn't because I thought sometimes like he's just morale is, and his morality is so much higher than mine at times, and I well, here's thought the we were thing. on the same side. Here's the thing. We're in a library, and he's going to slam down like a law book of New Jack City. Be like, look, normal murder we could probably get away with. Uh, murdering a BAI agent, even if they are corrupt, uh, that's uh, the death penalty. And I'm not exactly looking to get executed at again or at all. I don't, I don't want to die again. Is what I'm saying. That's fair, I guess. Because if we go to Pulver, he might just let us kill them. So we'll go to him first and then figure out what he wants. Exactly, exactly. Because he might arrest them and let us interrogate him. What, I that? mean, we, we still have their pictures and, and everything. We yeah. can, that's kind of scary. We, well, we know we, if they're coming we, now. Yeah. But, uh, and he's like looking at this giant law book. It's like, wow, there are, this is heavy as hell. There are a lot of laws. I, I'll say this. A lot of the towns I've gone to, their law book was like this big. It was like, don't kill each other, don't steal things, and like one or two other little minor detail things usually regarding their religion and that was it like oh, see. 
back mm-hmm. home we don't have books we have scrolls so it's always weird to see like books you know but yeah yeah no this... i get you i get you so they're like yeah usually everyone has like maybe like this big of books like this this is like you could hurt someone with this if you threw it hard enough oh th- this thing yeah and he like lifts it up he's like look this this is thing is a monster if you drop this off of the like you know even two stories it's crushing somebody uh, and it's like, but it's got weird laws in it. Like, look at this. And he like points a finger at a page. And if PJ, you want to make up whatever law he's looking at, or I can come up, try and come up with it. It is up yeah, to PJ, you. just make up laws. Sure, why not? You're currently looking at um, industrial zoning laws and where it is and is not okay to put a donut receptacle or fast food business uh, so close to a uh, industrial warehouse or weapons manufacturer. Yeah, see, look like. No one else thinks of that. This town is nuts. I mean, it makes sense. Because, I mean, granted, the air is not the greatest here. But, uh, I mean, putting it right next to a restaurant, not a good idea. But I never would have thought of that. No one thinks about that. True, true. Okay, okay, fine. We'll take we'll take your safe route first, and then, and then we'll figure it out from there. All right, I feel like that was slightly an insult. No! I made a fireball rock. I'm just throwing that out there again. Everyone told me not to do it. And okay? it was a very good rock. It's still a very good rock. It it's, is. It's in Alona's bag. Yeah. Also, we should probably catch up with that um, Acadian elf. Yeah, we need to do that to tell him about what's going on. But yeah. also, we need to update Pulver on that whole situation as well. But yeah. let's not tell him about the information cube because realistically, I don't want any that information falling into anyone else's hands but ours. Absolutely not. <laughs> we just said we found an old man and now he's behind a door that eats people. I want to visit Jeremy sometime. Yeah, he's he was he's a good door. Mm-hmm. Good door. All right. I've let's known rally him since everyone. He was else. a baby. <laughs> All right, so unless anyone else has any other business, I'm going to say that you all have collected after about 30 to 45 minutes of research coming back together. Um, if you all want to role play or share information, now is the time. Otherwise, I'm going to ask, what's the next move? I share all my information, and mostly also because I'm so lost. Do um, wait, so, Oh, yeah. Go. We'll go ahead. No, no, you were in the middle, sorry. I was not. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> then I was going to say I vote uh, BI, uh, BAI office uh, because we have a secret door to the back of it. We can probably get some more information on the people involved in the the plot to try to get rid of uh, camouflage. And uh, Dragon can look for special top secret hidden scrolls. Because this is where he said they would be. It, it's, true. It's, it's the best of everything. You're right. Yeah. Dragon also wants to look for the schematics for the anti magic field. Because he thinks that's going to be a pretty useful thing against, oh, I don't know, a god or somebody, maybe. <laughs> because. Just, nope. Yeah. Just, mm. mm-hmm. no god powers. Well, actually, no, it didn't work well, against divine stuff. So, <laughs> never mind. It just is anti dragon. <laughs> it's arcane magic. If there is ever an arcane sorcerer out there, it would work them. against them. Yeah. True. Yeah. Well, I'm also gonna inform everyone about that safe that halfway house. Okay. Mm. Oh yeah. All right. So you have the halfway house. You have the details about uh the ninth cycle prophecy and what Arbad said, you also have the secret entrance into the BAI and information about specific individuals within the BAI who are working with the Reckoners who are also working to purge uh, camouflage. camouflage from New Jack City. My brain completely shut down for a second. So in the order of operations, uh, you all want to go to the secret entrance first to get into the BAI? Yeah. Okay. 
So uh, remembering that Rochelle said that she basically built a secret entrance for you in a sewer nearby, uh, you uh, get the manhole cover up, which is surprisingly heavy, but you're able to move it with some time and effort. You slide it over, drop down to the sewers, slide it back like a Ninja Turtle, and uh, you begin moving through the sewers in into uh, this unusual wall that seems perfectly made into a corridor walking into the corridor you find that you immediately escape the sewer and there's this divine perfect hallway made of the same ugly linoleum tiling and 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 ugly fluorescent lighting and ugly like cream colored walls you see in every building that's like official in this area and after a few moments of walking you come to a step ladder with a secret sliding trap door just above you. Dragon kind of like looks at this and like looks to the group. Should we tell Pulver about this? No, it's a secret one for, for us. The God Rochelle created it for us. I don't think anyone else can just like pop up and use our magic god created door well i'm just thinking more along the lines of it's here now if somebody starts venturing around in the sewers and ends up in the bai not we'll my tell problem them after. <laughs> where was this not my problem when i was sending a fireball rock to the assassin kill <laughs> you and that fireball rock i swear to god <laughs> he, he, wes is fine Dragon's a little salty. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you can tell the BAI maybe when it's over. We can consider that for sure. All right. Okay. So, who's going up first? I will. Both here? Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, we play these games in the the mud trenches. Watch this, and then he gets up and he's like really sneaky about it, and then he like ducks down and then peers it back up very slowly. A little bit. <laughs> give me a stealth check. Uh, plus, I'll give you a plus one. Okay. Okay. You know, we're gonna hero point that because that was really really bad. I just want it's fun. This is fun. I'm enjoying it. I'm hero pointing it. For a 19, much different role. Because uh, <laughs> a two is not going to cut it. Oh, God, no. Uh, that would be 30. 30. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, thankfully, you uh, are able to go unseen despite the fact that you slide it open and you look up and you are in the dead center of. Uh, an information analysis center. There are people storming all over. You can hear the clicking and chirping and beeping of something in the room and papers flying everywhere and constant chatter. You can smell this acrid, cloying smoke of cigarettes and uh, the the obviously burnt smell of bad coffee as these, these agents are probably running on three hours of sleep and working for 18 hours just filing intel I, uh when i close it back for a second i'm like there's a lot of people up there what, what should we do uh elona looks at shiona bis and dragon this seems like your thing <laughs> What is everyone dressed in? She's gonna Our, ask like, uh, I was wearing the last thing I was wearing was like, oh, we just got new outfits too. We did. It's like a fit, like, uh, I'm trying to blend in. So it's like whatever hip young men would be wearing, like, as a, a day outfit. Like, it's probably got it, like, you know, I don't know. Uh, it's got a hat, like, one of those, like, be like, I'm a post. I'm a postman boy. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like like the cabbie postman hat. Postman boy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Postman boy. If PJ, if we walked in, are all the bi like 
wearing the same thing if we just walked like waltzed in would anyone look at us differently of what we're wearing like would we be inconspicuous i will say if you do so in the new jack city clothes you'll get a plus uh one for your stealth check plus two if you follow the leader meaning one person rolls a complex stealth check with a plus two and you all take their stealth check as you just follow them um because the clothes you have on are very very nice fitting but nice looking around they're wearing just gross and grody bare minimum appropriate clothing for the office place new um <laughs> who's the stealthiest i think it's, it's not me 100 yeah. yeah like i'm so, okay but i am following your lead come on Gio. <laughs> okay Stealthism. let's do it i have a plus 16 and no more hero points let's see what happens i mean it's, Can I it's good it's good we, we are. We're, I think we're, we all are. Oh, yeah, okay. we're just following the leader. Mm -hmm. So the leaders. Um, I to maybe look more a little little blended in. I'm going to like take off the vest I was wearing, like unbutton the first like two buttons on my shirt so it's not like prim and proper. Roll up my sleeves. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, expose those like, forearms <laughs> and those testicles. Yes, please. And like, she's gonna put up her hair and just like really. She already looks tired, first of all. <laughs> she's always tired. Um, and just like look at everyone else, as in like a, come on. Oh, uh, all right. Uh, and I roll up my sleeves, and uh, like. The nice little collar on the shirt. I, I like frazzle it up a little bit. I've been working for some time. Oh, <laughs> and Dragon is wearing his battle clothes. Like he did not change into the nice clothes for this stuff at all. Of course. <laughs> not at all. You have it in your inventory. Can you do a quick change? <laughs> <laughs> in the suit, quick change to your sure. Dragon will be like, all right, we're going to try and blend in i thought okay fine and he's like gonna set down his pack and like start changing his outfit and be like you know and he's gonna strip down and 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 put his clothes on oh okay so... oh like you haven't seen it oh you might not have valona oh sorry <laughs> Oh, uh, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just, I'm just gonna take a big old GM leap over that Papa Smurf <laughs> in mental image. Uh, so, so Kylie, what was your stealth check again? <laughs> Hold on. Ooh, that was a good one, Wes. Okay. Plus two. 30. Oh, plus two? Mm-hmm. 31. Okay. So you get dressed, you come up from the manhole or the, the trap door and into this room. Um, and I imagine at this point, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I imagine that you are walking, just hiding in plain sight with purpose, head down just to get out of this room. Uh, I'm going to have some like papers in my hand to make it look like I'm really going somewhere. Yeah. And and just everyone is following your leads, or everyone else is kind of the same. I, I'm yes manning it, like yes, you're right. Mm, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, like like Chio's the executive. Yeah, and we're all exactly. like following her, like her assistants. Yeah. So you move through and like yes, blah blah blah, blah, blah. and everyone's like blah 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 blah, and you're able to pass through without being seen or made to be suspicious at all. Don't be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Dragon just suspicious. looks at everybody like, how the hell did that work? There's not a single other blue person in this entire building. Hey. You don't know that. Look, you know, I'll, I'll be honest. I want to meet them. Wait, can we roll to see if there's one 
Another oh, dusk okay. walker. To to confirm, you want to roll to see if there's another dusk walker in the build to create if there is not one. <laughs> yes. Do okay. the waffle maple syrup coin flip. We must know. All right. No, it was tails. Uh, Sorry. I look That's around okay. when Alona says that. And I'm like, oh no, I didn't see any. Yeah. <laughs> but you do, you do see a lot of uh, elves and dwarves and halflings and half orcs and 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 every other smattering of uh, uh, fantasy ancestries and all you know colors, creeds, and sizes. So, having a person with blue skin, while right now not reflected, not unusual. Very diverse office. Yeah, very very it's lovely. The BIA is great about that. Yeah, they're, one they're good thing about very everyone inclusive. cannot yes. like magic. Yeah, they're not they're not they're not judgy. This is great. <laughs> no, so good. So no, where yeah. where are you going to go right now? Because now All you're right. in the building complex, you're in this middle of this giant kind of lobby with a straight ahead to the front doors and uh, two or three uh, hallways branching off from where you are. Was it the basement we wanted to go in this one, or was it like the top? Like, where was the information supposed to be hidden? That because uh, Agent didn't... Pulver told us to get in here and find. I'm pretty sure they were both the basement. What, what yeah, didn't the trapdoor take us to the basement? Trapdoor came up from one of the bottom common areas. Now, okay. to be fair, uh, Agent Pulver did say that it was in the Dark Operations Vault, and we thought oh, that it was in the basement. Now, where that vault that. is. That's me have to figure it out. Uh, I want to find someone who looks like they know stuff and see if I can pretend like, oh my God, my boss is, is on my back and I need to uh, get find out where this place is. The the, the, the vault? The, the dark old vault? <laughs> yeah, where, where is the edge of legend, the edge of legend Tyrion Lannister? <laughs> <laughs> Um, that that is hard to say. Uh, oh no, I know where they are. They're they're at the Quilliot. They're at the the Magic College. Ironically enough. Um, but for Randy specifically, uh, yeah. give me a deception check. Uh, as you are asking around for this. Okay. Uh, that was a sixteen plus. You said deception. <laughs> Twenty-five. 25. Okay. So as you ask around, you see, you run into some, some poor bright-eyed, you know, intern, and he goes, Oh, holy Adams, that's a top secret. That's at least a top secret S1 or S2 installation. Uh, I, I only I only have forward-facing secrecy. I, I can't even go there. Um, um, uh, you need, you need to speak to a, a manager. Probably you got to go up at least two floors to ask about that. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, you know, from one intern to another, uh, just keep, keep your head up. <laughs> oh, you're an intern. You're already assigned to TS1 and TS2. Oh my God. I'll keep my head up and, and, and you do us proud, buddy. Yeah. You wouldn't happen to know where Agent Pulver's office is, do you? Agent, Agent Pul the Agent Pulver? Yeah. Yeah, he's on field agent's assignments level. He's, um, oh gosh, I want to say about third floor. Go to the field agents. Oh, sorry. Go go to opera operatives and analytics. He, his office should be in there. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Come on, intern. Uh, all right. Uh, sorry. Oh, where's Tobias? I was gonna say for a split second, <laughs> I, I was about Tobias. to jump in as Tobias. I want Tobias walking up with me, and she's just like handing him things, just right <laughs> over the shoulder. <laughs> I want to just imagine you just picking things up off of random people's desks and handing oh. them to Tobias to hold. <laughs> yes. He's he's taking it. He's like, and he's, he just takes it. And he goes, "Oh, thank you. This is exactly what I needed." Mm -hmm. He waits like three or four desks down, and then puts it on some other random person's desk and just keeps walking. Yep. That is that is, sounds like exactly what the real Tobias would do as well. <laughs> sometimes life imitates art. Sometimes art imitates life, and sometimes they just imitate each other. Mm -hmm. It's that guy. So, after after a couple stories, you eventually get up to this beautifully carpeted 
actually kind of smells nice and fresh. Everything else kind of smelled sterile and stilted and, and the little like remainder of the acrid smoke that you got from that room. But now it smells nicer. You see uh, beautifully polished wooden doors with uh, crystal windows and words somehow embedded in the crystal themselves with these beautiful handles. And sure enough, you find the uh, in parentheses, in parentheses uh, operatives and analytics door. It's got them on the side. Mm-hmm. Got it. Uh, this is it. Does it have like a keypad or can you just open it? Just a door. Sick. Well, there's going to be managers and stuff up here. All right. Uh, just, just follow my lead. We got this, right? All right. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Right? And she's going to look at like Dragon and Alona. Right? Yep. I'm just a totally. Intern. Oh. You're so much better than Tobias. She's going to open the door. Tobias goes, good, because I'm not a bloody intern. Uh, <laughs> you walk in. Uh, very different atmosphere. Everything uh, three, three stories below was crazy, hectic, stressful. Here it's very relaxed. Uh, you see a gentleman wearing a white uh, coat uh, with a white shirt and a black tie, uh, jet black hair, gelled back, and he's got a scotch in his really nice glass, shoes up on his desk, leaning back, crystal blue eyes open as he sips it, and he looks at you all and he goes, oh, my various science metaphors, you all look absolutely, no, wait, I had something for this. Um, something, something positive. You can figure it out. And he kind of puts a shot glass on the table or scotch glass on the table. Do I recognize this guy from the photo? Or one of the photos? And no, you recognize him from the bar uh, that you went to when you had the bullet from camouflage. The one that kind of struck out and left. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, I remember you. We're looking for uh, Agent Pulver. Uh, what? The nerd? Yeah, he's in his room uh, doing nerd things, you know, like uh, reciting I'm laws. I'm sorry. Uh, you're just going to make fun of my friend? Oh, no. I'm, I'm so sorry. I didn't uh, know you were uh, friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Less. Uh, less. Less of that, please. Thanks. Okay. All right. Uh, I mean, I could just I can just make fun of him louder no, as you no. walk away. Uh, and he's gonna like look up. He's Dragon's gonna put on his best. I'm uh, more important than you face. And just be like, what was your name again? Uh, I am clearly the best agent in the entire BAI. My name is Shooter. It's a pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Shooter. Uh, and if you keep up the attitude, you'll be cleaning toilets for the rest of your days at the BAI. So maybe check the attitude. Oh, oh, I check my attitude. All right, fine. Well, next time you are able to do half the things I can do, then maybe you can tell me about what I should be doing with my attitude, okay? Hey, hey Mr. you shouldn't talk to Special Agent Homer like that. Do you know where he comes from? He's pretty high up. He's higher Yo, than you'll ever be. No, and then I run over and I whisper in his ear and I go, no, you really don't know who Officer Homer is? No, why should I? He's so secret that even the the top of the company don't know him. His identity is so kept a secret because he can kill you with a blink. What? <laughs> what? That, that doesn't even begin to, with a blink, he's blinking right now. And last I checked, aside from crippling alcohol problems, I'm feeling great. Wait, 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 wait. I didn't use wait, my lethal I... blink. Yeah, I, I go over to Alona. Do you have that thing that makes people sick? What do you mean? Didn't you have like a in, like it was like the opposite? Maybe maybe a uh, like something like the opposite of like a heel, like that would like make someone sick or like. I know I did. Oh, was that I you? I have one for my like cloak. Yo, can you... it's only if I hit him with an arrow. Oh. <laughs> Oh, okay. I mean, never mind. Never mind. Just, just straight up. Just a real quick one. 
I just wanted one that would make him sick because he would just talk about, I'm feeling great. Like anything, like a sleep, like, uh, you know. You want to zone of truth? Um, <laughs> Dragon wants to do something kind of dumb. As Go does. ahead, Dragon. I love it. I love it. He's going to go, I need to borrow your pen. And then he's going to pop the wrist blade out and stab the pen and pick it up with that. Okay. So he reaches ah. into his white. Uh, suit jacket, pulls out a pen and lays on the table and he goes, <laughs> yeah, a pen. I don't know if you can write, let alone, and then you sneak out the blade and stab it and it just goes, science, fuck, what? Why would you? That's a pen! And he's just gonna glare at him. Maybe be more polite next time and he's just gonna like shink it, like hold it right in front of his face and shink it back into the wrist blade and then walk to Agent Polar's room. And I say, just as he would blink, it was that fast. And then I walk. <laughs> as you, as you, as you walk away, you can hear Shooter uh, slowly build in panic as he's screaming for a woman named Alana. Alana, Alana! And his voice in the distance, what? And he goes, since when have we been recruiting famous refugees? Since nineteen years. Well, I'm sorry, I'm, I don't go sober to meetings. And he just keeps yelling at in the distance to this person you don't see at this point in time. But I eventually you go to Pulver's office. You're incredible. Well done. Thank you well for done. that. Thank yep. you for that. I hope everyone in chat caught that reference. I hope everyone who sees this in the future catches that reference. So that good. is special. <laughs> so good. You I'm so glad you liked it. I was like, you know, Shooter's been in the universe for like three years. I gotta, I gotta figure out. Anyway, anyway so you get to Pulver's office. Um, he's got this really nice uh, desk and a bunch of papers on there. And this really great chair he's leaning back of, and he's just looking at documents. Uh, his hat is on this hat rack. His uh, coat is around the back of his chair. Uh, you can see now that he's got uh, those those pistol holders bandoliers with two service pistols and he's just stressed out of his mind looking at this this document that he's currently reading i'm gonna open the door now right now i'm going over a surprise hello thank you for being here what the shit are you doing in my office i'm gonna put the pictures down on his desk Yeah, yeah, no, I know these guys. They're on. They're on Dark Vault Intel duty. Why do you right have now? these pictures? Right, yeah, they're all active oh. right now. What do you What do you have these for? Oh, they're, oh. they're the ones trying to kill us. They're, they're the Assassin's Guild. Yeah, they're, they're double agents. They They've infiltrated the bureau. bureau, oh. bureau. Try telling that to your boss. That's gonna be a fun conversation. All right, now we knew a few people had some, shall we say, dicey backgrounds. Didn't know they went all the way to the Reckoners. All right. All right, fine. Here's how they're going to do this. I'm guessing you came here to crack skulls and, and kick ass? If it's allowed. Good. Then that answers my second question. He stands up, puts on his hat, leaves his jacket, pulls out his service pistols. You come with me to the Dark Vault right now. Dragon's gonna look to Chianabus with the, just this big shit eaten grin on his face. Just like. She's gonna like smile and wink and then just like total turn and walk out the door. <laughs> it's gonna be a good day. Agent Pulver just starts walking out and as he does, he's in a quick hurry. He's walking around and he goes, Farragut, I need to get some paperwork up top right now. I need you, I need you to let uh, Chicken Hawk know we have a 1077 in progress. I'm going to work it out right now. Shooter, you're an alcoholic with an Oedipus complex, and your overcompensation is only because you're insecure. Alana, you can do a lot better, and I'm very sorry you're here. Everyone, we need to go right now. I need to have cars down at the bottom, and I need to have everyone evacuate from the third floor. Let's go. Dragon with that, is... everyone's scrambling. What's yeah. that? Dragon's impressed. He's like, hmm, that's impressive. So eventually, uh, as they leave, a, uh, uh, a kind of 
I'm trying. I'm doing this gesture like this is words. Um, a whimsical looking, uh, uh, kind of spritish, a spritish looking uh, woman with uh, bright red hair and bright blue eyes wearing this lovely cardigan sweater uh, comes up and she goes, <laughs> hi, I made these passes. These will have to get to the floor in question. Hey, listen, um, so we could like murder those guys? Uh, Probably. What? We like, with like a like a sword or a gun or you know, know like your bare hands. Like, how's that gonna happen? Why do you want to know? <laughs> uh, Nothing. Uh, what? No reason. What? Ever heard of a new jack equalizer? Oh. <laughs> he comes and goes. Mm, no, I have it. What is it? Um, perception check. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Hard. Yeah. Yeah. Hard perception. Uh. All right. 21 for Dragon. 41? Mm. 31. 31 as well. 34, 31? Okay. What are you what are you trying to perceive exactly? She's um, a filthy liar. Why the fuck is she asking? Yeah. yeah. And what's wrong with her? She's definitely sus. You see a name tag. It says, hello, my name is Cheryl Lynn. Yes. And Knew it. Oh, it's Cheryl. It's Cheryl. And she just and you realize that this is uh, a sick fascination for her. She's like the type of person who listens to true crime podcasts for the thrill of it. Um Reef Psyche figured it out. <laughs> oh, I knew this the first line that came out of your mouth say like redhead, all this stuff. Like, oh it's freaking Cheryl. It's freaking uh, Cheryl. And so she is interested in the murder because that is a um, that's a, that's let's just say that's a green flag for her. Where the fuck is Pam? All right, <laughs> Pam's Amazing. gonna be one the the first one through the door beating the crap out of these guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't do a Pam voice. <laughs> so these She's guys are on the floor. Uh, yeah, we're gonna murderize them. I guess they were assassins. They were murderizing other people. So. So like you're <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna kill them all? <laughs> wow! Uh, flush. Oh, we're leaving. Yeah. Okay, bye. bye. You know, you if you're done and you're like, you know, just gonna, just bold with bloodlust. You know, maybe come by and say hi. Ilona pulls Dragon away. He, away he's, does he's Ilona not pull understanding that she's nuts. At all, he's like, "All right, yeah, we'll we'll come say hi. You should see what happened to the other guys that no, tried to find no, us no. before." Oh, okay, we're leaving. <laughs> She's like, "I would literally love to see that." As yeah. you pull Dragon away from a walking human red flag, oh, it's wow. true. Yeah, terrifying. <laughs> terrifying. Now, this homage aside, Agent Pulver leads you uh, to a special elevator with the cards that Sherilyn gave you. Uh, a quick in, uh, put into a box, press the lever, you hear a loud clunk. You go inside, the elevator rises. Uh, eventually, you get to a room that's got three doors black, red, and blue. Um, let's go in the black one. Yeah, let's get it over with. <laughs> Right. Yeah, Kylie, are you gonna go on the do what? Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm not gonna let them see me coming, are you kidding me? <laughs> Alright, so, Pulver reaches, pulls out both pistols akimbo, gets his back to the side of the door, and kind of starts to slide down. And he says, alright, which one of you has training on uh, breach and entry, or any sort of uh, tight unit commando style operations? And maybe point at Chionibus, but it's like a nervous point, like... Dragon, yeah, raised his finger with the breach thing, and then remembered he can't use magic and put his hand down. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say yes, PJ? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, think, I think so. I think so, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, to that, uh, with his guns kind of up, he goes... All right, so 
do you want to be the one that first breaches the door or do you want to be at the uh, the end of the line, the anchor? Do you want to lead and cause shock and awe or do you want to be the back of the line and try to control the situation? Dragon? I want shock and awe. You want shock and awe. All that, right. I mean, I can be in, I'll be in front. It makes sense. I've got the sword and he's going to like load like in front of Pulver, like pull the bolt back and load this giant round into the gun. Yeah, I'm ready. What in a bad scotch and a bad shit do you have in your hand there, man? Oh, they, the we got this from Stokes. This is called the New Jack Equalizer. They, That's not even supposed to be. You know what? You got to be out of my city at some point. So for right now, you go friggin' hog wild. All right. You got the front. You want the back? You want to you do crowd control when we break in there? Yeah, yeah. I'll, t- I'll take the back. All right. All right. All right, then. I guess that's me on the door. He gets up. He walks over the door to his back, and he looks to everyone. And he says, "Hey, how do uh, how do you open a door as a dwarf?" Ow! He kind of picks up a leg and he says, "You knock really hard," and he kicks with his back foot as hard as he can. The door <laughs> shatters off the hinges, and with that. He just starts shouting, go, 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 over to Dragon. And Dragon's just going to, like, burst in the room, sword at the ready, I guess. <laughs> All right, so we're going to roll initiative. This is not for combat, strictly speaking, but this is for the op- uh, turn of order here. So uh, everyone roll initiative to see where you go in this insane breaky, uh, breach and entry, breach and sweep. 20. Uh, 21. 29. Uh, Hold on, math. My brain just flatlined hard. I feel you. 32. Damn, okay. Uh, Randy, what was yours? 20. Oh. It's fine. <laughs> For clarification, Dragon, you said your initiative initiative was twenty one. Twenty one. Twenty one. Okay. Uh, yeah. There's no chance of me getting a thirty one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Pulver just got a twenty two. I don't want to go first. <laughs> can't you hold you? Can't you hold your action? I can hold it. I'll hold it. Yeah, I'll hold it. What did you get? I got 29. Because it's based off perception and perception. That is stupid. Huh? Because my wisdom is maxed out. Because your wisdom is so big. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Okay. Brother. I'm like so wise right now. <laughs> so as you kick as pulver does a uh what i like to call uh the dwarven lock pick aka you just kick the damn door down with a backwards kick he immediately turns whips his guns around dragon comes running in everyone starts to enter the room there's shock and awe and loud noises you all come into uh the dark vault and it, it's quite literally a vault of information you're seeing those the same sort of metal diocese that Emmerich had in the basement that would project lights with all the information. You're seeing a massive warehouse of like 20 or 50 of these projecting all kinds of data. You're seeing uh, uh, things from all over the world, uh, demons, deities, forbidden knowledge all kept in here. You're seeing holy sigils and runes and purity steels marking off the entirety of this locale and the dead center of it. You're seeing uh, a ritual being performed by eight people in business suits well in business time suits on the ground in the dead center of this ritual you see dog tags service <gasps> tags no! across the center you see four candles strategically positioned and you are hearing uh these people chanting um they're speaking in common they're basically trying to purge camouflage from the trenches right now. Just kidding. I'm using my action. Fuck those guys. Yeah. <laughs> yep. No, you need to stop that immediately. 
Oh. It's funny you say that because with a 33, two of the Reckoners that are within this ritual activate. They stand up, they pull out two guns, oh. and they and they just say, the time of reckoning is at hand. And the others at the ritual site going, huh. fucking double agents. You can't trust anyone nowadays. <laughs> and with that, uh, the fighting will start now. The Reckoners are going to go first. Um, there's two of them. They're going to start just shooting a volley of gunfire at all of you. Uh, oh. What am I doing? I don't need that. I need reflex saves from everyone. Oh. Ooh. Nope. Dang it. Yeah, nope. Uh, it's a dirty 20 for Dragon. You say, where am I reflex? <laughs> <laughs> when you say reflex. What, no, uh, I got a 32, 19 plus 13, Damn. 32. Okay, nice, nice. I 32. rolled a five. 27. Oh, no. 27. You okay. rolled a five? What? On the dice, but it's still a dirty 20. Okay. Wow. I have a 14. Total? Yes. Okay. Wow. I rolled a four. So Randy got a critical success. Kylie got a success. Uh, Wes got a failure, and Sydney got a critical failure. I throw myself in front of the bullet to save Agent Pulver. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but not on purpose. <laughs> he trips over her robes. <laughs> oh, so. Uh, the number of damage is going to be, uh, so the roll is about 25 damage. If you fail, you take, uh, 25 damage. If, if you succeed, you take half of 25. And if you critically fail, you're taking 50. What about a critical success? Did that do You anything? take no damage. That is going to be a full action from both of them as they work together to create this hail of gunfire. Uh, that being said, though, next up in this list is Shionibus. What? Oh, yeah, because I rolled a 31. Holy fuck. Yeah, I was waiting for you to find that out. I was like, Cindy yeah. doesn't know. I, <laughs> I was distracted. There's a lot going on. I get it. Okay. Um, oh, well, the ritual can't continue if these, these guys are already up and not focused anymore. So, we're just going to fire and use all of my shit. Kill them, shit of this. Murder. Murder. Uh, I want to shoot at the ones shooting at us. Yeet. Okay. I don't have a hero point. Okay, it's fine. That's a natural one. Ah! Which makes it a 21 to hit, though. Just okay. saying. So Still toward it. That's good to know. That's good to you know. You hit Alona. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Pause in front of another arrow. Um, you know. Just, who who convinced the cleric that she needs to be the meat shield? What's <laughs> happening here? I thought oh. Dragon was in front. <laughs> so the, the, critical, the critical fail will go wide. Uh, it will hit one of the non-reckoners in the group. Oh uh, no! Who just gets hit and goes? Who shoots a freaking bow and arrow in New Jack City? What the shit? Uh, but you know they can <laughs> they can die mad. Uh, that's one action. You have two left, I believe. Yep, yep. Uh, screw it. Here we go again. We're putting you in dice jail. Hold on. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Stay in there. Yeet. That's a two. Which is a 22. Dang. That'll unfortunately miss the Reckoners opening fire upon you. Another one in dice jail. Last one. Swear. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. All right. And then I'm using my ring to not take penalties. Yeet. That's another freaking two. Are you talking I'm about just the, uh... a little stressed out. The ring of Shog? Yeah. Yeah, you can you can roll twice and make the higher number. It gives you true strike for one for one action. What? That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a it's a ring that has true strike. I forgot how many charges a day, but it gives you basically for one action, you know, advantage. Yeah, there's one more though. There's one more. Uh that is an eight and makes it a twenty-eight. 
That hits. Sick. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Uh, and then I was using precision as well. But that's always because I'm a boss ass bitch. Yeah, you are. Oh, would this be a sneak attack? No, they literally turned so. you and open fire. No, it's... I didn't think so. I didn't think because I was in the back. It was worth a try. That's fair. <laughs> Just in case. You know. uh, oh, math. That is 30 damage. Mm, nice. Yeah. Who shoots All right. arrows? Me. Says. <laughs> I'm <laughs> rustic. Leave me alone. <laughs> rustic? <laughs> Jenna, this is a bread loaf. <laughs> <laughs> Aw, the clue arrow... bread loaf. If she'd be a stale means bread hard. loaf. Hold on. If she's going to be bread, she'd be stale. Let's be real. Not oh, sourdough because she's bitter? She'd be stale sourdough. <laughs> stale sourdough. Bitter and tough, but you know what? You put some cheese on it and you put it in the pan and it's it's it's, it's passable. Or you make French toast. Ooh, even better. Ew. Gotta oh. use boyos for French toast. Hmm. Uh, okay, so uh, with Shonabis's arrow, an arrow hits him right in the chest. He's, he's still able to kind of shoot, but the one has to go to his hip. Uh, next up in the initiative order, Alona, what is your dexterity bonus? Not great. It's a zero. Oh, okay. So they're going to, this one is going to go bo uh, before you then. No. Um, you see him reach for the anti magic uh, device on his hip and then kind of has this moment no. of like crisis and goes, and instead he just behind his back pulls out a rifle from the service field what <laughs> have sit and no, fires absolutely not he is going to be aiming at shionabis because hey 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 oh hey how no, big is hey. this vault hey oh it's a it's a massive room it's easy like uh uh i'm gonna say 100 feet, 100 feet long, about 20 feet tall. Okay, so the Indiana Jones thing where they put the ark, almost. Yeah, there's like three of these. Okay. Um. So that being said, uh, does a 28 hit you, Shunimus? Barely, but it does. Barely, but it does. Okay, so it's not a crit. That is good to know. So that means it's going to do a lot less damage. You're going to take uh, six piercing damage. Cool. Uh, and from that, I need you to make a two. He's gonna, he's, uh, he's gonna make a stealth check as he breaks off. No, uh, he is gonna declare stealth on Dragon because you're big and scary. What is your perception bonus? My perception bonus is 10. Okay, so that's a total 20. Oh, God, he critically succeeds. He runs behind a bookshelf and then vanishes from sight. Oh, okay. To Dragon only? I'm going to say it's to everyone. However, he is specifically considered uh, hidden from Dragon. Mm. You can't see him, but once you see him, he's got no hidden... Uh, he does not have the hidden quality. But against Dragon, he does. Okay. Yeah. Um. So he vanishes from sight, and he is done. Uh, Alona, your go. All right, well, I'm going to use Divine Wrath in the bookshelf you just hid behind. <laughs> okay. I know, against my own kind. How rude. Um, it's fine. I just don't know how... It, oh, the books. I just don't know uh, how Divine Wrath works. Um, it's 4d10 against the alignment of their deity. <laughs> Attack. Books. books, who do you believe in? Yeah. <laughs> I believe um, in a thing called love, you know? Well, you know, I could also do Searing Light. Oh, you're destroying just fire. You just destroyed the BAI smut collection. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just raised it to the ground. Searing Light is 5d6 fire damage um, with a bonus of 5d6 extra good damage if the books are undead <laughs> or fiendish. Oh, no, you can you can do Divine Wrath. It just says a spell oh. gains the trait of the alignment you choose, and you deal 4d10 damage of that alignment type. Oh, Each great. creature in the area must attempt a fortitude save. Creatures that match the alignment you choose are unaffected. 
So you basically take whatever alignment uh, Alona is and Afra is, and that's the type of damage this can do. It's actually pretty good. Holy crap. I mean, I guess. Now that you uh -oh. say that, <laughs> maybe I should keep it. No, do it. It sounds cool. Now I am confused as to what to call Alona because she was started out lawful good. <laughs> you can still be lawful good. I like she's still pretty lawful good, but she just yeah, she just has commentary when we do not lawful good things. That's true. Okay, she's just disappointed. I'm, <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm not mad, just disappointed. My alignment is is lawful, disappointed, or just neutral. I don't understand. <laughs> Help me understand. All right. Well, I'm gonna get this guy with my lawful good energy and i i doubt he's lawful good okay uh that's a fortitude save so he's got to make a fortitude save what is the uh let's actually do this in the awesome uh dice that rick and the gm gave me what's the uh dc to beat oh those dice are too powerful is that my spell dc i must mm -hmm. up, i must upgrade because it has been i forgot to upgrade this section in particular Hold, please, while I upgrade this section. Um, I do believe it is... Oh, there's a lot of me. Uh... Uh, no, what? That's not... I didn't want to add a point to anything. I wanted to just add numbers. Uh... It's a 28. The spell DC. Holy crap, that's awesome. Uh... Yeah, he fails. Well, that's good. I hope so. All right, I'm going to roll 10d10. Wait, no, I lied. 5d10. Sorry. 5d10. 5d10? 4d10. 4d10, yeah. Uh, he takes 19 damage. Okay. And he's second one, if I recall reading right. <laughs> Terran Wanderer. Lawful good with a neutral love for romantic um, fiction. That's Amazing. an alignment, right? I'm not sure. Uh, so you you hit him with this. Like, you know what? This is a new spell. I want to tell me the tale of how this spell happens. What happens when you clap when you cast Divine Wrath? Well, Alona, big mad um, because she was just shot, <laughs> um, and someone just assault, insulted her best friend, who's the coolest person alive, and also just tried to hide from her other really good, amazing friend, um, who is so close to being best. Um, but must reserve space for Shionabis because if, if space is not reserved for Shionabis, Elona feels like a traitor. Um, so Elona summons the spirit of Afra and goes, I ask you to forgive me for the absolute carnage I'm about to wreck on these books, but this person needs to understand that they just can't insult my friends like that because that's the rudest thing ever. And you see just a dark purple electricity shoot from Alona with these purple passion flowers with vines overtaking the um, the bookshelf and crushing it beneath them. As the vines and the blast extends out, uh, it I, I just want to put this out there. It is a 20 foot burst area. So like this <coughs> fires off it hits the guy hiding behind the bookshelf uh and it also hits the one that uh was hit previously by shionibus huh. they both get kind of clipped in that blast uh that they, they, they're both not happy about that uh so i think you have one action left or is that all three actions uh divine wrath is two so i have one action left and who's who's next is it dragon or lothir um Probably Dragon. Dragon, Possibly. I'm yeah. gonna boop you with the guidance. You get a plus one. Yay. Yes. All right. Booping with guidance. Next up we have the last reckoner. Um That's epic title. <laughs> the last reckoner. Sounds like a badass book, yeah. Or movie coming to you this fall. <laughs> yes. The Last Reckoner in theaters, February. <laughs> so one of the Reckoners stands up uh, and, hold on, I gotta do a coin flip for this. 
That was not a good coin flip. Yep. He stands up and he kind of open, opens up his wrist and you see the blade pop out. And you see him stop for a second. The blade goes back into his wrist. Kind of like unbuttons his jacket a bit or his, uh, his shirt, pulls out a cigarette, lights it, and just kind of steps back. Takes two steps away. Just smokes a cigarette watching you all. I like that. <laughs> I respect that. Mm -hmm. He respect. said, "I'm a yeah." He he knew they're about to get wrecked. Uh, that being said, he's out of the fight for a while. You can tell as he's completely just not put up any effort. Next up, we have Agent Pulver. Yeah. Damn, I didn't realize you spelled Reckoners with a W. What? Because they get wrecked. Never mind. That's funny. I like that. <laughs> Is Morel and Tobias in this order? Because they were definitely with us. I'm rolling their. I'm rolling their initiative now. Actually, I'm just yes. gonna do myself a favor and say they go last. Yeah, I'm not the last last. I just yeah. pay more attention than they would. <laughs> just slightly. <laughs> okay. Cool. So, um. These dice are so weird. Like, the first time I tried them, and Monday when I tried them, I couldn't get any high numbers. And then I played with them at a home game. I got three crits in a row. Agent Pulver, all of a sudden, opens a gate of battle with a critical 20 with a gun. Oh, yes. Goodbye. Oh, Goodbye, my reckoner. God. Pow, pow. Agent Pulver's the best. He, he reckoned the, the mess out of this dude. Oh no, it's doing full damage. <laughs> yeah. Let the NPC kill these guys. That's fine. Yeah, I'll yeah, play I'm good with it. I'm okay. Oh my God. Okay, hold on. He said, You lied to me. You didn't write this on your HR forms. <laughs> <laughs> Randy! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. Okay, so with all of the the this the good old bonuses, yeah, he takes out his pistols, bam, 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 fires into the first one that Kylie arrowed. As he lights them up, you see a stitch of blood squirts, giving the uh, the the entry wounds, uh, sucking wound to the sternum, shot to the heart. Last one goes up. Trapans him right between the eyes. Bang, bang, pow. And with that three round burst, he starts running in. He stands over the dead body, pistols poised. And he, he with a 16 on the dive face and a total of uh, 34, he does an intimidation check to the room. And he just says, he just says, Everyone, drop what you're doing. Stop being freaking dumb. Or I swear to all I hold dear, I'm going to do this five more times. And I got the bullets for it. I just want to say, he just Mozambiqued that dude. He, he, he did. He really freaking did. It's like, it was like 20, 16, 16. It was bonkers. So, bam, 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 just kills one of the Reckoners right out, stands over the body, and just tells everyone to play it real freaking cool. Now, this is up to you all, because the one reckoner smoking a cigarette, you see him going like, no, nah, I'm, I'm cool. Uh, the other reckoners are like rifle, gun, and they're really kind of considering their life choices. They're really considering putting down the weapon. But you all have turns, so you get to be the arbiters of peace or violence. What are you going to do? Starting with oh God, it's Dragon. St it starts oh, with oh. me. Yes. Oh God. Yes. Oh no. <laughs> this entire situation is about to be diffused. All you have to do is decide: Are you going to take advantage of their flat-footed state and try to crit them, or are you going to continue the deliberations? He's going to attempt to end the deliberations. He's going to run up 
put his barrel as close as he can to the ritual circle and pull the trigger to destroy oh it God. and scatter any materials to so that they couldn't continue even if we kept fighting. Okay, I'm going to play with you a very fun game that I love with dice. Okay. You need to roll above a 12 and do not get a 19 up. Gosh. Oh, oh my no. god. It's a 16 oh. on the dice! Yes! <sighs> As you place the new jack equalizer into the ritual circle and you basically uh, open up and load in around the anti-material rifle and you holster it and you fire, a great comet, a crater is just hewn into the ground. And thankfully, the service tags of Stephanie Reyes, a.k.a. Camouflage, is thrown from the ground with this explosion. That's what he was trying to do, was scatter it with all of the shockwave. Yeah, if you had gotten a 19 up, you would have critted and you would have actually shot oh, and destroyed no. those service tags. Now, oh that being said, that was not the case. You did not do that. You didn't change the story beyond this moment. So you destroy the circle. I'm going to say anyone who wants to make a an intimidation check or a diplomacy check on your turn, you're going to get a plus four. Because this is this is not a good vibe. This is not a good look for anyone. Ren, now, Dragon. Oh, what's that? Randy second? needs to roll an intimidation, get another not 20. Sorry, go yeah, ahead. No, you're not wrong, because Randy somehow is the king of being very scary when he doesn't want to be scary. Uh... Wes, that was one action, correct? Yeah. Got two more. Uh, how much? How long does it take for me to reload this thing? Uh, that is a one action reload. Okay, so one action reload, and then he's going to like kind of point at everybody, and I want to try and intimidate them. Be like, the next one goes into one of your heads. <gasps> Intimidation. Put it down. With a... I didn't mean to step on you. I'm so sorry. No, no, Intimidation okay. with a plus four. I'm hyped. I'm here. Let's go for it. Uh, that is a 13 on the dice, so my intimidation is 10, so 27. 27. You see all the bureau agents that are part of this, they immediately just... They, they start reaching in for, like, any service weapon they have, like a knife, a collapsible sword, anything. They drop everything, they take their badge, they put it on the ground, they undo their tie, and they just put their hands up. The one smoking, the, the one record of smoking is just like... Uh, <laughs> That's the only smart one in the group. The one He's hiding behind... Run. Give me a perception check, actually. Me? Uh, uh, Dragon, give me a perception oh, check. Okay. I is he still hidden? Ah. He is to me, because that's a nat one. Yep. Oh my god. So, now we Going go to, to Lothir. So. <laughs> Lothir. Help. So before I... the NPCs have their say, you do see that this guy who's hiding behind the thing with the rifle sees the back of Dragon's head. He sees the situation is completely borked, and he starts leveling his <gasps> sight. For that noggin. All right. Uh, oh, I, yes, yes. Sorry, I, I just realized something about my sheet. I have the spell to turn into a dinosaur. I didn't have the feet, but I just took the feet when I got it. That's why I was confused. Uh, sorry. Yeah, we got it. All right, so what I want to do is... Please Jurassic Park this dude. <laughs> no, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I was fighting. That's one intimidation roll. <laughs> I would see. It's not intimidation though, because if he's about to do that, I want to knock his gun and have it go off uh, in the air by with a gale blast, like pointing up towards the sky to mess with his. Okay. Yep. Give me a nature check if you want to do that, as you're basically kind of taking the spell and using it creatively. Okay. A nature. Mm-hmm. Nineteen plus eighteen. That's that thirty-seven. Is yeah. that right? Yep, that's a critical hit. 
So I want you to tell me the tale of how this spell kicks off. So Lothir sees uh, him aim the gun and he's like, nope. <laughs> uh, and he just sort of like calmly breathes in really slow for a moment. And then as he breathes out this air, it's kind of almost like haze-like. It like rushes across the room and like coalesces and then shoots up right under the gun's head as he pulls the trigger. Uh, shooting it off into the roof, uh, missing, well, how, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So as you do that, you extend the air out, the, the breath from your lungs, and it, it gets larger and larger and, and more powerful, and it shoots his, his aim way off, and you hear the, the loud uh, pop and uh, report of the rifle as it fires and hits around. It just embeds in the ceiling. And then he just goes, Woof! flies up, slams into the roof, <laughs> the ceiling of this building, and then wham, and then drops down again. He is, hold on. He's not unconscious, but he's he's uh, not feeling good, for sure. <laughs> Lothar, was uh, that you? Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. That was uh, freaking awesome. <laughs> he was about to shoot me. What a dick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I couldn't warn you. There's just not time. No, All this right. was way better. <laughs> I like the surprise. Uh, I like the surprise. All right. I don't know what that did to these talks or whatever the situation was, but yeah. Oh, it's okay. With that, uh, the other two who are like, you know, dropping their weapons, they see that you've just summoned wind and threw this guy into the ceiling. Uh, by the way, as he lands, you can tell there's this unusual ripple around his body. Ew. The, oh. the one that Lothier critically uh, attacked with a spell in New Jack City. No, that's right. No, it's it's no, nature magic. He's fine. Yeah, it's, it's I correct myself. Yeah, he's fine. But isn't but it's definitely isn't unconscious. Blast evocation. It is, but its source is oh, in this okay. case is it's primal, not yeah. arcane. So okay. yeah, I corrected myself. Thank you. Uh, so that doesn't happen, but. But it almost happened in that. Like, for a second, I was it like, could have, oh. and I was like, wait, no, that's right. right, right. Yeah. So they have their weapons drawn, and they're starting to lower them. They see you do that, Lothier. They see this person on the ground, and you hear the clacking of metal. They just drop their weapons on the ground and then just pick up their hands, and they drop on their knees, and they're like, nope, nope, that, I, I didn't know we were going to be fucking with that. Nope, 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 nope. Lothir the scary druid. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it was fast. It was hectic. It was it was criticals galore. But you kicked down the door and you stopped the ritual to purge camouflage from the trenches of New Jack City. And as you're about to talk to them, that is where we are going to end episode 34 Ooh. of Edge of legends season two so we are going to be saying our goodbyes and then we'll be seeing you here again next week starting with wes wes please tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet sweet internet hello everyone i am wes at wes underscore irl on all of the things uh and yeah if you want to see some cosplay stuff i do stuff on my instagram which is at wes underscore irl but that's about it thanks and next up, we got Randy. Randy, please tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Randy Alvarenga. You can follow me on Twitter at Roller Raja. That's R O L L E R R A J A to see all the different projects I'm in. Come check it out. Yeah. And next up, we got Kylie. Kylie, please tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Hello, I'm Kylie, or I go by Kai. It really doesn't matter at this point. You can find me at Kai's Wonderful Life all over the internet, Instagram, Twitter, Twitter, all that good stuff. When I'm not here, I am over on World Tree Quest on Twitch at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, where I play a D&D 5e game, Homebrew. It's amazing. I love it. Um, coming up at the first week of October, I will be at HorrorCon with another little group. I definitely won't be me but you should definitely come check it out. Uh, it's a lot to be a lot of fun. October 1st and 2nd out here in LA. It's going to be great. So you should come check it out. Hey. Well, next up we have Sydney. Sydney, please tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. 
Hello, my name is Sydney Rubino. You can find me all over the internet at Sydney Rubino. That's Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Um, when I'm not here on Wednesdays, I don't exist. Um, I we there's a stream coming up. It's gonna be really freaking cool. Um, uh, the social media push for that's gonna happen real soon. Um, but until then, uh, just catch me here. And um, thank you for being around. You guys are awesome. Thanks. Well, that just leaves little of me. My name is PJ McGaw. You can find me all over the internet at PJ.McGaw uh, on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Come find me, come friend me, and let's have fun. And when I'm not here with these amazing legends, you can find me here Monday night for Wayward Arcadium as they do their second, I'm sorry, their first field assignment for the new season. Uh, think of it as like a dungeon crawl of sorts, and they are in a very spooky forest, and it's it's, it's weird. The trees have eyes. So come tune in uh, next Monday, 8 to 11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for that at Dungeon Crawl, see where that goes. And a lot of other really cool things I want to announce. What I can announce right now is please join us next week. If you know someone who has watched and kind of come and gone, please join us next week. Next week is episode 100 of Edge of Legend, the big 100. It's been years in the making. We got here. I don't even know what I'm going to do to surprise them, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be deep. It's going to be great. Who knows? So come tune in for episode 100 for Edge of Legend next week that being said we're a few weeks out from october and we're having our halloween game once again we'll give you the social media uh, fun stuff for that but please come in expect to see some familiar faces and expect to see some guests too it's going to be fun great time uh, if you remember uh, somewhere at the end of the of the green war the gates to doltonshire were broken open so i guess we're gonna have to deal with something from that wait, maybe what? wait mm-hmm. wait I'm sorry. Go back to episode 63 and 62 and you'll see it. Yeah. Oh anyway, my that God. being said, Wait uh, a that being said, uh, so please tune in October for some of that. Um, I might be blanking on some things, but there's so much stuff in the works that we're all busting our ass on. Some really cool stuff. We're all super proud to show you. So when that day comes, we'll let you know. Um, oh, gosh. Anyway, thank you, Wes, for TDing the show. Thank you all for tuning in. See you next week for episode 100, Wayward Arcadium on Monday. Uh, everything else, when I can think of it. We are going to be raiding Paul Dances. Because we got some friends there. I'm seeing a Tran Wonder. A suggested nickname for episode. Human Resources got some planning to do. Or I Reckon the Reckoners had been wrecked. Or Now Hiring his Assassins. Lots of openings. I like that one. <laughs> I like that one. All right, everyone. Ah, I love you all. See you. Same that time. Same that channel here next week for episode 100. Until then, we're going to be rating in three, two, one.